Yo, what's good, people? Izzy Max here, back again, finally, for some uh, preseason power rankings. This says season three, but it's actually season four. I don't know who did that. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck you, is but... the answer to that question. <laughs> I'm joined by Ryan. Hello. Dan. What's going on? And Matt. What's up, guys? Uh, one weird thing, Matt's not a coach this season, so yeah. Um, well, not not yet. We'll not yet. See. Not yet. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that maybe. Um, but before we get started, anybody have anything to say? How the fuck did these three mons go undrafted <laughs> into tier one? What the <laughs> shit, people? Holy yeah. crap! Yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, as was a like, weird uh, weird draft for weird people. That's for sure. Yeah. Remember when you added nine psychic types and the best dark type in the format isn't drafted? I don't remember that. <laughs> Oh, man. But without any further ado, we'll get to our bottom rank. We will start at the bottom and end at the top. Dan, take this one away. Yeah, absolutely. So in 16th on our power rankings, uh, or the league power rankings, I should say, we have Burst. Now, if you look at the right, uh, let's just break down what these slides are going to look like over overall generally. Uh, on the right, you're going to have the individual rankings for everyone. We've highlighted the lowest and highest rankings that the team received, and then the team itself is on the left. And we have a signature Pokemon in the middle. Uh, for Burst, we've actually included his Emburst Cycle of Misery that he has uh, showed us in the past. And... It just so happens to be accurate again uh, after the draft at the beginning of this season. But I will say there's actually a lot of stuff about this team that I like. And I know that I was higher on it than uh, some of the other people in this call. Uh, Landorus I and Rillaboom I think are much better than Landorus T and Rillaboom, which is what he initially went with because you're not going to be clicking Earthquake when there's grassy terrain up as much with Landorus I, even though it still is a possibility. Politoed Kingdra is going to be a pretty strong rain mode. Snorlax Aromatis is going to let him function in Trick Room. He's got a decent redirector in Magmar. Uh, and then he's just got a couple of cool options with another Trick Room option in Caparaja. He's got some Tailwind and other shenanigans that Archaeops can do. He's got an Electricity Redirection in Mainetric, and Hitmonlee exists as well. So there's a lot of cool things this team could do. And in past seasons, I think this was somewhere, this team's probably somewhere solidly in the 7 to 10 range. And I think it's got a lot of offensive capabilities to go with it. Uh, one of my main issues with this team, however, is that it has some very big defensive weaknesses that are obvious, especially at the top end. Uh, Landorus, Rillaboom, Kingdra, Politoed are all weak to uh, freeze dry, and those that's going to be a pretty common set for him. And even though he switched to a different Landorus, leading, picking a Pokemon that is quad weak to ice and another tier one that is weak to ice, that just feels like a recipe for potential disaster in team building when you don't have some good options that really punish ice types as well. So overall, uh, there are definitely some solid pieces, some solid modes on this team. It's going to be able to get some wins. Uh, and I think that seeing that someone, some people have ranked this as high as fourth, and Burst is not either of the people that ranked him at fourth, shows that there is a lot of potential behind this team as well. But I think with how powerful and how well the draft went for so many people, uh, it, it's tough to justify putting this team, in my mind, in the top half of the draft right now. But I do definitely see some potential there. But I also understand why people would look at those glaring defensive weaknesses and say that uh, it's going to be one of the easier matchups given how hard every matchup looks like it's going to be this season. But what do you guys think? Yeah, so I kind of have the same thing. There's a lot of uh, common weaknesses. I mean, freeze dry is not the most common move. Uh, but when your two tier ones are both weak to ice, um, it does kind of get a little wonky. Again, when you drafted Lando T and Rillaboom, I was kind of questionable. Uh, and luckily, Lando I was able to come back to you in that uh, special 12th round. Um, so I'm glad you made that switch. But other than that, this team, when you look at it, it doesn't scream immediate offense. Outside of maybe the Landers and the Rillaboom, everything needs setup. Snorlax probably needs Belly Drum or Curse. Uh, and then also to set up Trick Room. And then just the other mons at the bottom do specific things. Uh, <clears throat> I'm big on uh, your bottom tier mons being a little more diverse. But for instance, Kapraja, only going to be in a Trick Room match. Hitmonlee, 
is probably the most uh, well-rounded Mon at the bottom other than Magmar, which is probably just going to redirect nine times out of 10. Uh, Archaeops is tricky to use, uh, but the Focus Ash Endeavor set uh, does do a lot of work. Uh, and then Manetric's just there for um, Lightning Rod, which you don't really need. Uh, your Rain Sweeper's not weak to Electric, um, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then your other Tier 1s don't really care about Electric moves. So Manetric, it's a cool Mon, but I don't think it's going to be completely utilized on this squad. Um, but I, you're gonna you're gonna run into a matchup where you're just like, okay, Lando Rillaboom just kind of goes in, and you're gonna roll somebody. So just because you're at the bottom, does not mean you're not gonna win a game. You're gonna end at the bottom. Um, so, yeah, not, not nothing too bad. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, I mean it's you know he's at the the first part of a cycle. The cycle always gets better. Um, yeah, my main thing is that you're just your opponent's not punished for clicking Hailstorm, which I think is actually one of the understated issues. Um, like, yeah, sure, I don't like, yeah, sure, you can switch in Politoed, and sure, it eats the Hailstorm, but now your Kingdra's not fast enough, you know? Like, you're not actually punished for even misplaying that kind of a turn, you know, a whole hell of a lot. Um, I think the Trick Room mode on here is the most convincing thing. Uh, the type cores are actually pretty solid if you look at them. The fast mode, I'm really not crazy sold on. I think the best parts of it are the Archaeops Tailwind and the Hitmonlee Unburden stuff. Um, I think it's kind of the best parts of the fast mode, but it doesn't get all too fast. And also, Landorus Eye has a problem, which um, I'm going to kind of let Matt get into. But Landorus Eye as a map threat has a couple issues that actually, to me, were kind of the biggest things holding this team back. Um, but the modes, the general modes and feeling of this team is good. It's got weather, it's got tailwind, it's got trick room, it's got nice priority. Um, like it has a lot of those like key fundamental tools we look for when we look at a draft team. And it actually, I think, is pretty like solidly built. Like this is not like a brainless team to build for. It's just a lot of the teams this season were pretty good. Um, and this one's just lacking a little bit around the edges in terms of power, speed tier. Um, defensive typing synergy that kind of thing where it really just felt like it got out crept by a lot of the other teams um i'll uh i'll finish things off here um i'll, I'll start by saying I, I actually really like this trick room mode ryan ryan mentioned that, that uh that's i i believe you said that was probably the most convincing part of this draft i think i agree part with that i like uh I, I like aromatisse paired with either snorlax or Copperaja. i think they're both <coughs> excuse me both uh Really, really good options with Aromatisse. Uh, Aromatisse itself is a great Trick Room Setter, Taunt Immunity, uh, unique typing for a Trick Room Setter, that's great. Um, good speed stat, you're hitting below base 30. Um, and uh, it, it even offers a little bit of special offense, um, even though Snor uh, you know, Snorlax and Kaparaja being your main sweepers are both physical. Um, Aromatisse is not... Uh, you know, it's not like some, something like Audino where it just can't really do damage. It can still do a little bit and maybe even provide some uh, offense with like a nasty plot set or something crazy like that. So that's probably my, my favorite part of this team. Um, I have two two main gripes uh, with this team after after that. One is uh, picking Kingdra over Ludicolo. Um, I, I get... Uh, I, I, I understand that you... The, the burst probably wanted a dragon type here. That's, you know, I'm, I'm speculating. I, I don't know for sure, but I imagine he wanted a dragon type uh, to round out the uh, dragon fairy steel core, although I don't really consider this much of a dragon fairy steel core, considering that Kingdra's not really working well with Aromatis and Kaparaja. Um, uh, this is something that I'm going to mention on uh, a, a bunch of these slides, actually. Uh, when you're building a type core like this, it's not it's not enough to just check all three boxes. Make sure you have all three types, whether it's Dragon Fairy Steel or Fire Water Grass, whatever you're doing. Um, you also want to make sure that those those Pokemon actually work well together and they uh, they have synergy beyond just you know checking some boxes on the on the the type chart. Um, and the Aromatisse and Kaparaja do that really well for each other, but the Kingdra just doesn't really fit despite being a dragon type. Um, and Ludicolo here just seems like such an obvious choice given that in addition to the, the Drizzle Politoed, you have uh, you have Grassy Terrain with Rillaboom, so you're, you're able to switch in either of those and boost Ludicolo's stabs. It seemed like a no-brainer to me. 
um, even though you're lacking a dragon type, which I, I don't think is that big of a deal. Um, and then uh, the the last gripe I have is something that we've uh, we've we've mentioned here already: the two tier ones. Um, Landorus Incarnate is obviously better here than Landorus Therian, um, although it's it's not like you're just going to be sending out a, a special set every single time. That's that's a lot of what Landorus Incarnate wants to do, uh, since it has uh, sheer force boosted attacks like you know Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, the, the, the problem is that um, Landorus actually does not have access to a special flying type move, and given that you are a flying type, so you get stab on max airstream, which is the best max move in the game, uh, a lot of the time you're going to want to run uh, a, a physical set if you're going to be maxing it, and still the incarnate form, having the same move pool as the Therian form, only has access to Earthquake as your, your uh, physical ground stab, so... Um, I think it may that may actually be a little bit more of a problem than we, we initially thought. Granted, if you're uh, running the physical set, you're probably maxing it. You're going to be using Max Quake more than Earthquake a lot of the time, but you got to consider what are you going to do uh, when your max is over? What are you going to do if you have to pivot to a different maximon and you, you're forced to Earthquake in grassy terrain, something like that? Um, so I think it still could be a problem. Um, and considering the 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 amount of stuff that was still on the board when it got to burst uh, burst turn in uh, in the first round there were so many like landers and rillaboom even putting aside that anti synergy with with the um the common ice weakness and the earthquake stuff um there's nothing I, there's nothing i find particularly special about those two as a pair like they're fine they they cover for for each other's weaknesses here and there a, a little bit um but considering what was left on the board at the time uh a, a pair that's just that functions fine is not good enough i think um so that was a, a little bit unfortunate to see especially given that he had uh he had the wheel there that's all i got yeah so moving on we have hector uh with a 12.29 so not too far off uh with a low of 16 and a high of five uh, his team is G-Max, Blastoise, Togekiss, Darmanitan, Galarian, Regirock, Comfey, Crocodile, Togedemaru, Frostlass, Talonflame, Appleton, and Sandaconda. Um, I was actually one of the higher people on Hector's team. Uh, Blastoise and Togekiss as a dual redirector uh, combo, I absolutely love. The only problem is they're both weak to electric. Um... But being able to set a Shell Smash with Blastoise while redirecting with Togekiss, uh, or just setting up whatever you want with a redirecting Blastoise, because it is bulky, um, I think it just works really, really well. The rest of the squad um, hits decently hard, um, but I do think speed is going to be an issue for him. Uh, his Trick Room Setter, I believe, is the Comfey, uh, which isn't great. Uh, granted, I am a big Comfey believer. I just don't think it's great as your Trick Room Setter. Uh, and then for Tailwind is Talonflame, which is very reliable Tailwind. Uh, but after it sets the Tailwind, it kind of just can sit there sometimes. Um, and it is just fake out bait. So you got to be kind of careful with that. But like I said, the rest of the squad uh, hits relatively hard. Um, there are some offensive synergies. Uh, but defensively, outside of the Blastoise Togekiss, um, I feel like this squad is going to falter just a little bit. I do love the Togedemaru there for a little bit more support with the G-Max Blastoise. Um, but other than that, it's just you're going to be relying on like three three Mons all season to, to pick up KOs. Um, and I feel like that's going to be easy to read. Um, so wh why don't one of you guys take it? Yeah, I can, I can jump in here really quick. I really love the flexibility that G-Max Blastoise is going to give to this team. Even if you see it in team preview, if Togekiss is also there, you don't know if it's going to be a follow me set, a fake out support set, a shell smash offensive set. And I think that kind of flexibility is going to give uh, Hector a lot to build with this season. However, like you said, the offense and specifically the max offense really sort of turns me off of aspects of this team. Uh, Blastoise without boost isn't going to be a huge amount of offense. I mean, it's going to get the uh, 
it's going to get your chip damage, but you need to you need to get it boosted up to have a great max offense. You could run crit, crit Togekiss, that's an option, especially next to a Follow Me Blastoise, but then you're going to be relying a lot on the crits, and even then, Togekiss, I think, is slightly underwhelming as a max option in this format. Darmanitan's not going to max. Regirock needs a weakness policy. Crocodile's offenses are okay, but not great. But it's a decent max option. Uh, Come Fate Toga tomorrow. Frostless, not great. Appleton has worse offenses than Amoongus. Uh, I mean, Talonflame has worse offenses than Amoongus. Appleton could potentially be a max option uh, at some point, and Sanaconda could as well. But I think a, a lot of teams in the league suffer from a lot of pressure on a bunch of things wanting to max but i think this team there are going to be some builds where it's going to look like a maxless team and then he's not going to be able to maximize the the dynamax that this format's going to come with just because there's not going to be there's not always going to be a pokemon that wants to max on this team but uh matt and ryan what do you guys think uh, I don't have too many thoughts here. Um, I, I think there's some pretty obvious uh, combinations here. Um, I, I, I like the, some of the synergy here. I like the, the G-Max Blastoise with Togekiss with Lightning Rod. That seems pretty cool. Um, I, don't, I don't really have too many thoughts on this team. It's mostly just... Uh, there's good combinations, but it's hard for me at least to see how exactly all of these combos are going to work together. Um, I would also like to note that uh, Darmanitan is, or uh, at least Galarian Darmanitan, is something that I haven't really seen much of in, in draft, and um, when I have seen it, it hasn't really been that great, so um, I'm, I'm hoping to see some good things from that Mon. It's a, it's a cool Mon, it's not something that I've gotten to see enough of, especially uh, especially with Zen Mode stuff. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that in draft, and he's got double redirection here, so it seems viable. Hope to see it. Yeah, I picked Darm specifically because it was. I was like, we haven't really seen that pop off in MDL. Let's let's put it on the slide. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I like I like a lot of like the aspects of this team. Uh, this is a team though where I do have that. I've, I've mentioned this before on other PR videos, but this is a team where I have a hard time visualizing what four actually hit the field on a given match, like week to week. Like I'm just not sure like what four defensively synergize well enough to where because like this team has some like kind of overlapping type weaknesses like down down to the bottom uh grass type moves are really good into most of this team uh steel type moves are good into another good part of this team electric type moves are good into a good chunk of this team like if you kind of go down the list there are like some kind of just overlapping type weaknesses where it's like, I don't know what combo of four mons gives you that nice defensive type synergy that you're looking for, while also like applying that immediate offense, which I don't think this team has in full force, really. Um, so that's kind of my big thing with this team when I was um, looking at it. Um, okay. I think it's good. It's got good threats, and I like, I, if you're going to have two tier ones weak to the same type, I much prefer Blastoise Togekiss to the other team we just talked about, um, especially because neither of them are four act. But still, just this team's a little oddly constructed. Yeah, for sure. Moving on, we will have Matt taking Noah, and we do have a tie here, so bear with us. Yeah, so Noah here is uh, tied for thirteenth slash fourteenth with uh, with the coach that you're going to see on the next slide. Um, both of them clocking in at 11.11 .11 as their average scores. Um, so for, for Noah's team, um, there's some stuff that I really, really like here, and then there's some other stuff that I don't quite get. Um, if you look at the top half of the draft, Tyranitar all the way down to Alolan Marowak, um, I, I love this stuff a lot, especially the way that he built around the Marowak. I think there's a, a great amount of synergy here. Um, Noah actually had the second overall pick, and his first uh, his first pick was Porygon two, um, dipping down into tier two before uh, before picking up anything out of tier one, um, which I I still think is kind of a questionable decision, even though that Porygon two was one of our uh, our Pokemon that we moved down from tier one to tier two this season, kind of as an experiment, even though it kind of feels to us like it's maybe too good for the tier, um, which is 
kind of why we put it there to get somebody to pick it. Uh, but I don't think it was a good idea to pick it that early, given um, everything else that he had the opportunity to take out of tier one. Um, and then he also has the uh, Tyranitar Excadrill here, which was, um, I mean, holy shit, talk about fighting weaknesses. Um, that was that was a big problem I was I was seeing in the early part of the draft. Um, but I think he patched that up pretty well, um, especially with these next two picks, Gyarados being a good fighting switch uh, and having Intimidate, which is great because most uh, most fighting types you're going to see are physical. Um, and then Alolan Marowak uh, being a, uh, a straight up ghost type, um, which works really, really well with Orion in particular uh, and, and Gyarados, of course, since, since it has Lightning Rod. Um, and both Gorion and Marowak have a access to Ally Switch, so um, that's uh, he can do some Ally Switch shenanigans against some some uh, fighting attacks there. Um, uh, I, I I really like a lot of a lot of the synergy there with that uh, that that top chunk. Um, after the Marowak is where he loses me a little bit. I'm not totally sure what uh, what the direction of his draft was after that. Uh, I don't totally get the Umbreon and the Alcremi, even though I am very excited to see somebody, anybody, draft Alcremi, and I hope it works, because it's a really interesting Mon with a really cool niche that no one's ever used before, at least not in this league. Um, the Cradilly and, and Gengar I, I sort of get. Um, Cradilly helps with some of the water weaknesses that you're you're getting with the Sand Mode and the, uh, and the Marowak. Um, and it's uh, you don't really have anything up in that top chunk to uh, deal with very well with <coughs> with uh, with water types since you don't have a, a grass or electric type up there yet. Um, and the Gengar was was nice as well. It's another uh, another ghost type. It's something that uh, offers a little bit more speed um, just right off the bat. Uh, it's it's the highest base speed Pokemon on on this list, I believe. Um, if you're going to get up to Gengar level speed, you have to either set up a Dragon Dance with Gyarados, or you have to get Excadrill in with, with Sand, which, you know, they're doable with this, uh, with this team comp. Um, but it's also nice to see something here with, uh, fake out immunity, fighting immunity that's also just kind of fast and offensive. Uh, I, I like it there as well. Um, some of the major flaws that I was seeing with this team, uh, was that... It's it seems to be pretty lacking in uh, in support. I I really like a lot of the offensive synergy and the type synergy up up in that top chunk, but um, there is uh, there is no follow me or rage powder or fake out uh, to see on this draft, which is um, a little bit of a problem, um, especially for for Porygon too. If you're trying to set up Trick Room, it's uh, with without that kind of support, Porygon is is really just taunt bait, um, unless you're brave enough to take the EV light off of it and put a mental herb on it, and, you know, if you're particularly scared of, of taunt in, in a specific matchup, so um, that's something that I would be uh, pretty concerned about. Um, the uh, the offense, while, uh, while I do like the synergy here, uh, the offense leans pretty heavily uh, physical. Uh, most of the Pokemon that you're, you're getting your damage output from are, are, uh, it's going to be that Tyranitar, Excadrill, Gyarados, Marowak, um, you know, for the most part. Uh, and they're all, uh, not only are they all physical, but there's no Intimidate deterrent uh, to speak of among them, um, or anywhere else on the draft, if I, uh, if I recall correctly. So, um, uh, and, you know, even if you do make a trade for some kind of Intimidate deterrent, maybe you drop something for, like, a, a Braviary or, or something, um, there's still plenty of ways to uh, mitigate a lot of the physical damage if somebody's going really heavy on like the steel spikes and reflect or, or whatever else they might have. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem. And uh, the, uh, the the last one, <coughs> the the last major flaw I think is is um, his trick room mode, which seems a, a little bit weird to say because I love Porygon 2 with Marowak, but. Uh, Considering the lack of support for, for Porygon being able to set up Trick Room, um, I mean, it's it's kind of just, it's easy to, uh, to slap Taunt on something, as long as it has a good matchup against uh, Noah's main modes, it's easy to just slap Taunt on something, and then if Porygon 2 comes out and you can Taunt it, you're not going to get faked out, you're not going to get redirected. Um, and uh, I, I think the speed stats on the Trick Room mode 
uh, may also fall a little short compared to some of the slower uh, Trick Room modes that we've seen on, on other teams. Um, base uh, 45 speed on the Marowak is, is okay, um, but I, I think the, uh, the, real, the real baseline you, you want for Trick Room Sweepers is, is like 30-ish. Um, uh, Kanto Marowak can sometimes make it work with that 45 speed because uh, it can click Curse if you really need to, but you don't have that option on the Ghost-type version. Um, and then, of course, Porygon is also uh, base 60, so you might have a little bit of trouble versus opposing Trick Room modes. Um, but uh, if, you, if you can manage to get Trick Room up and they're both the slowest thing on the field, or at least Marowak is, um, uh, it, it does have a lot of potential to be quite powerful. So uh, that's that's all I got. What do you guys think? Yeah, so uh, two typings, ground and fighting. Uh, the only switch-ins you have to those are Gyarados and Claydol, um, which isn't great. Um, I know like Alcremie, uh, Marowak, Gengar, they're immune to, or they're either immune or resistant to fighting. But if I just have a Mon that can click both ground and fighting, it, it's going to be there. Um, and then when you draft Porygon 2 as your first pick, you expect a more fleshed out Trick Room mode. Because um, in my eyes, this team screams, hey, set Trick Room up on me. Um, with things like Titar, Porygon 2, Marowak, and Cradilly, I think is where it rounds out at the slowest. Um, it's not great. But other than that, you're going to pick up wins off the sand mode alone. We know how strong that is. Uh, Porygon 2 is great, uh, but without redirection or really fake out. No, no fake out. Um, you're not, like Matt said, you're not going to get that trick room up. Um, and then you don't have Tailwind either. So your only, only uh, means of speed control is sand and then some icy wind stuff. Um, so I just think you might struggle a little bit uh, getting your offense moving, especially if someone has maybe like opposing rain or a super strong trick room mode. Um, but that's really all I have on this one. I'm excited to, use, to see how creamy. Uh, last time we seen it was season one from Hunter. Um, and then that's the only time that thing's been drafted. Um, so yeah, uh, Dan. Yeah, uh, I think in a vacuum, I like this team a lot more than I do in the context of its division. Uh, no, as you can see, as our first red division coach, and uh, there there does end up being a bit of a split later on uh, in the divisions as well. But one thing that the red division does have is a lot of really powerful fighting type Pokemon, things like Marshadow, Zamazenta, Passimian, you know, really big hitters uh, in those regards that I think this team might really struggle with. And I think I'd like this team a lot more if it was in the other division, just because of where the direction that this division went with the drafting i think it's really going to make either getting that trick room up or executing with the sand mode much more difficult than it should be otherwise yeah um yeah this team just leaned way too physical for me and the defensive type synergy um i was i'm happy to have seen the fighting weakness addressed in the later parts of the draft but I still am not sure it was enough. I will comment, I really like Umbreon as a Pokemon in a vacuum. A very, very good mod in the max format and frequently slept on. So I am excited to see that. So you do get a, you get some brownie points from good old Ryan for that, I guess. Um, but it just leans way too physical for me. And I think the, the modes are pretty linear too. Like if I see Titar Excadrill in team preview, I do know what that is. If I see Porygon Marowak in team preview, I know what that what that is. There's there's a little too much linearity for me with this team, where it doesn't have that versatility and that unpredictability that a lot of teams above it are going to have. All right, moving on to our other fourteen thirteen, is going to be Tay, uh, with a high of one, which he did not give himself, and a low of sixteen. So he really hit uh, the high and the low uh, spot on He's the money. The <laughs> yeah, so uh, his team is Jirachi, Tapu Fini, Volcarona, Dragonite, Cresselia, Tangrowth, Blissey, Zoroark, Luxray, Pillow Swine, and Beware. Uh, is this the first time we're seeing a a mythical? Uh, no, we've seen uh, mythicals, I believe, on the. Um... Have we? Okay. Anyway, Actually, uh, um, this actually, team... you're right, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this team's actually kind of cool. Um, 
I think... So, Jirachi has this problem where it learns follow me, but if it does, uh, it's kind of cracked. So, it we outlawed uh, follow me. We don't like compl uh, complex bans, uh, but this is one we, we did implement just because we wanted to see Jirachi get used. But as an overall whole, uh, we just didn't really think it was it was right to, to have Jirachi with follow me. Uh, so, with that being predicated, I still really, really like this team. Um, the Jirachi, Finny, Volcarona, Dragonite, Cresselia, Tangrowth. That right there, his top six Mons, I think are phenomenal. Uh, you have two forms of redirection. Granted, they're both the same. Um, but I do like having both uh, because both Mons can be decently offensive. You've seen me use Tangrowth last season uh, to a lot of success uh, running it offensively. And Volcarona is just a powerhouse uh, if you can get things rolling and uh, really utilize maybe like a Quiver Dance or a Fiery Dance set. Um, Tapu Fini, Jirachi as a defensive core is just really, really good. Um, both of them decently tanky. They could probably take a super effective hit and still uh, truck along. Uh, and then offensively, they both offer just so much. Jirachi um, can just be a flinch bot. It does get the Serene Grace if it's like Scarfed or something. Uh, and then they're both as well just set up options dragonite i think actually fits this team decently well it does switch into a lot of the weaknesses of the the main offensive mode of this and then if you run like a policy or something even with multi-scale or not uh, i do believe dragonite is giving you a fair bit of offense um one thing that i do really really like about this team is its physical special splits um there's just a lot going on. Jirachi can be both. Dragonite technically can be both. Uh, Tangrowth can be both. Uh, Zoroark, I guess. Uh, Luxray, maybe. So when you see this team in team preview, uh, you're gonna have to guess if it's physical or special. Uh, and depending on that, you're gonna you're gonna see some coverage options. So I I did rank this team uh, decently high, but let's hear some from someone else. So uh, Ryan, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, this team I has some really cool stuff on it. Um, my big thing is that I don't feel like the Jirachi's being as supported as I wanted it to be. Um, when I kind of saw Jirachi was going to be legal, one of my first thoughts was like, oh, Jirachi's legal. Okay, so you pair that with like a Shadow Sneak or a Brutal Swing, you know, proc, just so you have a weakness policy option, um, which doesn't actually exist on this team. Zorark doesn't get Brutal Swing or anything like that. And I kind of looked through and was like, okay, I don't really see it. He has some bulldoze procs, because um, a lot of random nonsense gets bulldoze. But I don't super think that's going to be ideal since it's not clear body. Um, and just in general, I, I, I like the team. I don't think it has that immediacy of offense that I love. Um, and like Volcarona and Dragonite, I think, have the most immediate offensive presence with their like base stat totals. You know, Volcarona's got like 130, Dragonite's got like 134 attack. So like those can like definitely like just max. But also your redirection, um, if you're not running to goggles into Tay, you are throwing. You need to run goggles into Tay. <laughs> um, and with that, with those goggles, you can get around those. And Volcarona and Dragonite both have 4x weaknesses. Um, which I think can be a little exploitable. Um, I'm not 100% sure what Blissey's doing on this team um, on the whole. Uh, I feel like a lot of it, I feel like physical hits are going to be kind of what it's mostly sponging. Um, I really like the Beware pick. I think that was really cool. Um, the Trick Room mode is kind of weird. Uh, I like it, I think. I think like it's like Cresselia, Tangrowth, maybe Tapu Fini. And then, like, Luxray Beware, which I actually don't think is bad, but it's not quite as flushed out as some of the other um, of those modes we've seen. Um, but yeah, if you're going to have the dual redirection, I really would have preferred it be like one Rage Powder, one Follow Me. I feel like Jirachi could use more support, so it's a little bit bigger a threat in of itself, um, just with its attacking stats uh, that it gets. Uh, I feel like it has such a high level of versatility. And while I think the Tapu Fini is supporting it nicely, while I think that the Tengrowth supports it nicely um, by giving it that nice ground resist, you know, I still wish there was a little bit more to that. Um, and I do think that these are arc will give you some nice mind games potentially, but 
I'm not sure if that's going to be like enough um, week to week. So that's just kind of my thoughts. I, I think it's a good team that I wish had a couple different pieces here and there where I just wish that things kind of ended up lying out a little differently because right now it seems like you slap goggles on your max threat and then you go in with whatever super effective coverage you got which scares me a little bit yeah i uh, will oh, oh sorry go ahead dan okay I was, I was just gonna say i will add on to it this team seems to have really good defensive switchy synergy but not so much defensive on the field synergy yeah. and one problem with being really switchy like yeah it's gonna you're gonna feel really really cool when you switch a tapu fini into a dragon type attack that's going into dragonite but then your dragonite's also not attacking that turn and if you don't have the immediate presence to punish the thing that was doing that then you've just got a tapu fini sitting on the field which is a good pokemon but has no offensive presence at all so that that's just my biggest concern here is that offensive presence for this team and the need for him to play a more switchy defensive style instead of an on the field defensive style uh but what were you saying matt um yeah i think there's there's plenty of merit to that this is a very a lot of this team looks pretty bulky and annoying not uh not so much offensive um i do really like the um the fairy dragon steel core that he has this is one type core that i i feel like uh, checks more boxes than just like, well, I have a fairy type, I have a dragon type, and I have a steel type. Uh, the Jirachi, Finny, and Dragonite are all very, uh, like, mid to fast range speed. Um, they're going to benefit from the same kind of uh, support and speed control in particular. Uh, they have uh, good switch synergy. There's, uh, they're, they're all very uh, well-rounded stat-wise, so you're, you're not going to get one that's like you know, a glass cannon and something else that's like a bulky trick room attacker or whatever. Um, I like the way they work together. They're, uh, they're, they're similar in their stat spreads and what they do and what kind of stuff they benefit from. Um, and they're, they're pretty versatile as well. Um, especially Jirachi and, and Dragonite in particular, both being able to, to go physical or special. Um, the trick room mode kind of like Ryan, I'm a little bit skeptical of, I, I think I'm probably more critical of that than, than he is. Uh, I think picking Cresselia as one of your tier twos is is great if you have the trick room mode to justify it. Um, the the best trick room sweeper I think he has to pair with the Cresselia is probably that Beware, and I I don't think that's good enough. Um, <clears throat> uh, it feels like some of uh, the the last half of his draft, like I'm not really sure exactly what they're all here for. Some of them kind of makes sense it's not like there's there's a problem with like anti-synergy or anything but it feels like some of these monsters are just sort of tacked on um uh but uh uh there was one other thing oh uh last thing i wanted to mention uh since ryan talked about weakness policy procs for the jirachi uh interestingly enough zoroark does have sucker punch so uh you can actually lead um zoroark and it looks like you're leading something else and then surprise you sucker punch yourself with with the jirashi so i think that could be kind of cool if uh, if your opponent's not expecting it and um if you're you're disguised as something that throws them off in in some other way um you know the tapu finny sucker punching your own weakness policy uh jirashi sounds sounds kind of funny um and since zoroark is run special more often um you're it's not going to do too much damage to you even though it is stab sucker punch with a decent attack stat but i think you can make it work it looks like a cool combination all right moving on we will have oh, where's my thing at here dark and this is going to be covered by ryan yep uh okay so we got dark steam here uh we can see top placement at second bottom placement at 16 uh very peaks and valleys with a lot of this part of the um entire pr video actually um but we got uh ventini uh urshifu milo corvanite gudra fungus pincurch and slurpuff golark carbank and shedinja um i actually do like this team a fair bit i actually think i liked it better than some of the other people in the call as well um the Vint ventini has just it's just such a new like that thing can hit really hard both physically and specially it has great coverage move pool 
Um, it really benefits, too, from some of the transfer moves that we've added into the game. Um, and I think it's a pretty strong, like, contender for one of the better mythicals. And Victory Star is a really cool ability um, that actually several things on the team benefit from. Uh, not as many as I was hoping that some of them do. My Lodic in particular really likes Victory Star. Uh, then we have her Shifu, um, which I actually think is kind of a good, like, anti-pick for, like, a lot of the other, like, draft teams. Um, we're, we were seeing a lot of, um, I've personally noticed that there's a pretty, there's a few more dark and fighting weaknesses this go around than in the past. And I think part of that is that a lot of the influx of some of our new mythicals are psychic and skill types and that sort of thing. So having something that's just a huge nuke that threatens those, I think is really good. Um, Ilotic is something Dark uses a lot. He knows it in and out, and it's a very good Pokemon for this team. Um, I think overall, I think it adds a lot to it, and I think it's a great partner with the Vincent Vintini, especially to deter Intimidate, uh, especially on those top two Mons. Uh, Corviknight's a really nice Tailwind setter in this format, and it's bulky and super annoying and can just auto-win games if it's set up correctly. Um, Fungus, um, this team doesn't... One of my critiques of the team is that it doesn't really have a like super fleshed out trick room mode but having fungus spore pressure for trick room super nice also i really like pincurchin um just as a nice sort of trick room option for a sweeping potential it also gives you lightning rod for a couple of your mons that are weak to electric while also giving you terrain so you're getting a lot in one slot there um I don't believe he has anything to, like, rock Gudra. I'm not seeing anything at a glance anyway. But Gudra's done really, really well in MDL in the past. I think it's a really good max option, primarily. Uh, that's just really bulky and really hard to deal with. Um, and I guess he could do, like, Sap Super Gudra with Fungus. That'd be funny. Um, Slurpuff Pincurchin seems like it could be pretty good. Uh, Pincurchin's really slow, so even like after Springshot speed drops and stuff like that, I don't think it's that speeding much. Uh, but that does give you really, really fast fake tiers. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, Golurk is an absolute beast. Um, I actually think it complements some of the offense on this team pretty nicely. Carbank is a tier 5 trick room setter, and that's basically its main role on this team. It, um, Shedinch is kind of one of the picks that I take a little bit more issue with. Not because I think Shedinch is bad, because I think it's actually pretty good in this kind of a format. Um, but my main issue is is that like your team like overall like doesn't love like your main threat, that's the Ventini, does not appreciate uh ghost, dark, and rock type moves. Uh which Shedinch is just sitting there weak to all of those types. So I don't and uh, there's a couple other typings too, like fire that it's weak to, that your core and fungus are weak to. It so like I don't feel like you're it can't get faked out. Yeah, but it's that's pretty much all it does. I think it's just a proc bot. I it doesn't really offer and it doesn't offer that cool defensive synergy that you really want to see out of a Shedinja, I think. Um, when you pick it as one of your mods. Uh overall I think it's a pretty solid team. I think my main issue with it is it's a little like mid speed, um, and not everything, not every mode is as threatening as I think I want it to be. Um, like Gudra's great, but I would really like a proc for it. Uh, Ventini is an absolute monster, but it can miss calcs, believe it or not. Um, the Pincurchin, I don't, I just feel like some of that offensive pressure kind of loses its, its early steam a little bit on this team. But it's a nice, like, bulkier offensive team um, with the bases covered, I think, um, overall. Uh, no trick room mode uh, that isn't Fungus Carbink does hurt a little, though. Fungus Carbink, Pink Urchin. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say, don't disrespect Pink Urchin. That thing can pick up more calcs than you expect it to yeah, be able to. It can. Uh, and I really like Slurpuff with the transfer moves as well. Uh, I do think there is, uh, there are a lot of really good pieces on this team, uh, but defensively, I, I am worried about. Uh, I'm worried about two things: one, offense that's not Victini and Urshifu, and two, what it does defensively. Because the offense is outside of those two. If if Gudra doesn't get proc, its offenses aren't great. And then Milotic, Corviknight, Fungus. 
Pinkerton has decent offenses. Slurpuff, Golurk, Golurk hits hard. Carbank and Shin Ninja, like, I don't know. That just doesn't sound like it has enough punch for the amount of utility that it's going to be doing overall. Like, each of them individually is probably worth it. But overall, I think some of the utility ends up overlapping to some extent without providing additional uh, power. And I think with the additional bulk that this format's going to have, if someone brings something that's good against Victini and Urshifu, it's going to have, this team's going to have a lot of problems punching through them things. But that's, that's my main critique here. Uh, I do think there are a lot of really good pieces, and I think any given week, the four to six that hit the field are going to have the potential to cause a lot of headaches. Yeah, so I was actually really, really high on this team. Um, I do like the Psychic Fighting Dark straight out the gate. Um, a setup Milotic is an issue, as well as the Corviknight, um, which is kind of a, a pro and a con to this team. Uh, you're just going to require a lot of setup. Uh, and if that setup doesn't go right, um, you can kind of flounder around a little bit, and I don't think that's really what you want. Um, one cool thing is Slurpuff now does get access to, uh, I, I don't know, Belly Drum? Did it have access before to Belly Drum? It has Belly Drum now. It didn't used to. Okay. So just um, a Belly Drum, uh, Citrus Berry, Unburdened set next to maybe a Fungus. Um, it, it's going to do work. Um, so I, I do think Slurpuff does work really well on this team. Uh, also with the Slurpuff, if it is next to the Pink Kirchen, in the terrain, I think Slurpuff gets after you as well. It does. So, I, I do think Slurpuff is one of the more utility uh, mons on this team. But overall, yeah, just I wish there was a proc for the Gudra. I think that it's the biggest um, hole. Um, if that could somehow get uh, patched up without losing uh, some of your other offensive threats, I do think this team jumps quite a lot. Um, but other than that, just a solid team. I do like it. Uh, this is one of the better teams that Dark has drafted. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see this one. But if you can't set up, I, I'm afraid it's gonna gonna struggle a little bit, uh, Matt. So um, knowing now that the slurp buff gets after you, I think it's a, a little bit better than than I used to think. But I, I still, uh, I'm not generally a big believer in uh, Pinkerchen with an unburdened user. I've used Pincurchin a lot mainly as, as a trick room sweeper and it's great for that. Um, it's just you, you need you need your terrain setter to uh, to to be at least decently fast for a benefit from some kind of speed control that your unburdened user is uh, is is putting out. Um, and and Slurpuff a lot of the time wants to be like firing off, you know, a super fast fake tears or something and uh, Pincurchin it, because of its lackluster stat spread, it's going to have trouble keeping up. I'm not. Uh, I, I hope. I uh, hope Dark proves me wrong here, but I don't really see that mode doing a whole lot. Um, to me, his his team overall just it kind of feels like he has the beginnings of a few good modes, but none of them are really very well rounded. Uh, he's got some offense up up top with the Victini Urshifu. I would just like to see some extra like uh, offensive support there. Uh, Milotic, Corviknight, Gudra, those are some good, like, bulky, annoying Pokemon, but again, not really... I, I don't feel like he has good enough support for them. Uh, the, his trick remote's a little bit weird. His uh, he's, he's got Carbink as, as a setter. Victini gets trick room, I guess, but um, it's a little bit weird to, to use your one of your offensive powerhouses when it's base 100 uh, as, a, as a trick room setter. Uh, and then the, the Fungus and Pincurchin have some, some anti-synergy with each other. Um, not being able to spore things when you have electric terrain up is, is a bit of a problem. And they both kind of fill a similar role in, in just being super, super slow and uh, countering um, opposing trick room modes with that super low base speed. Um, so I'm not... There's, there's a lot of things here I'm not super sold on. Um, and also having, um, I guess this is worth mentioning since, uh, I, I forgot to mention it on the last slide since Tay has, uh, Rage Powder with, with no Follow Me as well. Um, I'm also not sold on, on that. Uh, it's, it's just too easy to put safety goggles on something if you really, really need to avoid the redirection. If you're going to have a Rage Powder user, draft a Follow Me user with it, preferably before you draft the Rage Powder user. Um, 
because it's just it, it makes the rage powder so so much better because it's not safe for your opponents to just slap safety goggles on something and avoid the redirection um and you're you're going to be able to use the the rage powder mon um much much more successfully because you're not usually going to have to deal with uh with opposing goggles so um i think that was that was worth mentioning there but that's all i got okay moving on we will have john and this will be covered by dan yeah so john's team i really like we got the more shadow the thunderous eye gothitelle duraludon mr mime drampa klefki obstagoon lilligant seismitoad and sandaconda first of all let's take a look at the tier one marshadow is a great mythical has some awesome abilities great typing and it can steal opponent boosts so it's really tricky to set up against now one thing that can really limit it is if it gets intimidating intimidated which is where the thunderous eye comes in like i think those two working together is as good a one-two punch as you are going to find in this league and then we move into the tier two, which is going to be a lot of support options with the Gothitelle and Mr. Mime, which is a filter follow me user that can survive most things. Uh, and then the Duraludon is going to be one of the few things that can completely negate redirection. So there's a lot of there's a lot of cool pack in there, uh, a lot of possibilities to outbuild and outplay your opponent. And much like last season, this is the type of team that uh, John could beat or could lose to anyone with uh, any given week. And then if we look in Tier 3, Drampa I think is a great Trick Room Sweeper. Klefki, awesome support value in the tier. Obstagoon, uh, decent value in the tier. Not my favorite, but decent. Lilligant can work with a sunny day set by Klefki. Uh, this, is, this is where it starts getting weird. Seismitoad, Sanaconda, Lilligant are all... I, I understand wanting low tier weather, but normally I like my low tier weather to all be like the same weather or weather that works well together. And I understand Klefki can set priority Sunny Day and Rain Dance for Seismitoad and Lilligant, but I don't think the Lilligant set's going to be great with the Klefki uh, because what are you going to do after you a Klefki using Steel Beam, maybe? Uh, yes. And then the, seism and then the Seismitoad... Uh, I, I'm very underwhelmed by Seismitoad a lot of the time in draft, uh, even if it's able to function in the rain. So I really like the first th two and a half tiers of what this team is doing, but the bottom four Pokemon I feel like could have been things that really added a lot more to what this team is doing well instead of trying to come up with an entirely different thing that this team might be able to do. And I'm sure he'll be able to bring it successfully, you know, a week or two. But I, th I think I'd rather have the consistency of four more Pokemon that complement the first seven really well, as opposed to four Pokemon that are sort of out there eating sand in the sandbox while everyone else is building a fort. Uh, so I do like a lot of what this team does, and I really think the top end is terrifying, especially the top two and what he was able to get out of tier two as well. I think he's going to be able to pick up some wins on the strength of that, but it feels like he's playing with one hand tied behind his back a little bit and building with some of those low tier picks. But what do you, what do you guys think about this? I've never heard the phrase, uh, eating sand out of the sandbox. That is wow. That's a, that's genuinely funny. Um, I guess I get to talk now. Um, so <laughs> Uh, I like this team a lot. Actually, one of my big issues with it that you didn't touch on is uh, double typing is a thing that happens across the board on this team. Uh, Gothitelle and Mr. Mime have the same type. Duraludon Drampa have the same typing, have an overlapping typing. Duraludon Klefki have an overlapping typing. And those are like all of tier two and three. Um, and while I don't think those mons necessarily don't vibe centered, uh, from a typing perspective, I do think that it is very notable um in that i think some of those low tier picks were an attempt to kind of flush out a little bit of type core stuff but i don't think it really fully committed to that i would have loved to see a high tier ground type um on this team as well i think instead of sanaconda i would have preferred to see like a digger spear or something like that and like tier two um over like maybe like if you if you're gonna grab drampa maybe instead of duraludon you maybe say, hey, I'm going to grab the 
diggers be in tier two and then you have that like nice electric flying ground core and just something that's a nice offensive piece uh to add to that trifecta of offense you know just a little something like that i think would have been good um i think this game's really good i'm excited to see what it'll do uh it's very much a wacky john team at its core um Lilligant will definitely mostly be a sleep powder bot um we've seen we saw him do that with roserade in a past season um so i do think that's its main role on the team and i know he really likes obstagoon so i'm excited to see this team i'm mostly worried about the fact that a lot of that tier two through three has um literally the same typings uh covered uh amongst themselves and uh marshad with under sleep is just re- insane i don't know how he thought of that that that's ridiculous it is one of the best one two punches in the entire draft i think yeah yeah i, I really like that a lot um my, my I'll, I'll be quick here my thoughts a lot of my thoughts line up with with uh, what dan said mostly uh, i love the the marshadow thunderous um <clears throat> uh great synergy uh defiant stuff looks looks really good um you get a fast coaching off as well if you want to if you want to do that with marshadow um i think it's a little bit hard to do that with with marshadow sometimes because you're going to be sacrificing your your offense but with something like thunderous next to it i think you can you can actually justify it um like Dan, I'm really not sold on these low tier weather modes. Uh, nope. You know, we we understand the the prankster weather with the Lilligan and Seismito. It's just I it doesn't doesn't really look like it's doing enough. If uh, but you know we know we know John's a crazy builder. Um, if he's uh, if he sees something there that we don't, um, then he may be able to pull something out with those. I'm I'm hoping to see something like that, but uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, we we have uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, the Obstagoon, I actually like a little bit more than, than you guys probably, mostly because of how it pairs with, uh, with Marshadow. It's another Defiant user, uh, can benefit from coaching, and they even have really great switch synergy. Obstagoon is something that I, I think we can all agree is very, very underwhelming. Um, it's a, it's a cool mon that's just not as good as anyone, like, every, everyone wants it to be. Um, yes. but this... This may be wishful thinking, but this might be its time to shine when it's on a Marshadow team. Um, my my last thought here is is really just about speed control. Uh, I, I I don't see as much speed control here as I would like. I know John drafted the Drampa as partially as a comfort pick and partially because it gets I believe it gets Tailwind by transfer now. Uh, but yeah, that looks like his only uh, his only Tailwind user on. Um, on the draft, which is a little bit of a problem considering how slow it is, and it usually wants to be in Trick Room. Um, I, I think for for uh, stuff, especially like Duraludon, you really want uh, some solid speed control, and then if you're, uh, you know, Marshadow and Thunderous are fast, but if your opponent just has a good Tailwind with some, like, mid-speed kind of mons, um, they're going to be able to out, uh, outspeed you pretty quickly, and there's um, not much you can you can do about it all the time, so that I think may be a, a little bit of a problem, but uh, that's that's all I got. Maxwell, what do you think? Yeah, so just touching on that last point, that is one reason why I didn't rank this team uh, relatively high. I didn't rank it super low, but your fast mode is fast until someone sets Tailwind, and then your slow mode I don't think is slow enough for opposing Trick Rooms. Um, with Drampa being the slowest, and I don't... Is Drampa base 30? 36 Um, i think okay yeah so opposing trick rooms which most people are going to have like a base 30 ish kind of sweeper uh are going to kind of pose an issue to you uh one of my actual main uh gripes with this team is your supporting options around your main offense also don't want to get hit by what your main offense is weak to uh you know marshadow maybe like a follow me mr mime well you got ghost coverage outside the marshadow thunderous uh, there's not really anything you can combine um, that really is like, okay, <clears throat> this mon's here to help my offense. Um, and then outside of the Marshadow Thunderous, uh, you do kind of have a fighting problem in the Duraludon, Drampa, and the Obstagoon. Um, Klefki's neutral, of course. But I, I, I just have an issue with some of the support options with your your strong offensive mode um but no and johnny i that probably won't matter at all and i'm just talking out my ass so 
yeah, I, yep. I love his offense. I feel like his speed control is going to be kind of the death of this team. Um, but like I said, knowing him, he'll he'll figure out a way around it. So moving on, we will have Toxic, and this will be Matt. Okay, so um, Toxic uh, went with the uh, Necrozma and Didi combo first, which um, I, I think is a, a great pick. Uh, not only um, because it's it's a, a new uh, a new toy that we we get to play with that we didn't have in previous seasons, but also because uh, it's it's just a really really strong combination, especially with the way he built around it. Um, this 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 is a beautiful Necrozma comp. Um, the the synergy between Necrozma and Didi is obvious. You got Psychic Terrain, you got Psy Spam with double expanding force. Um, the redirection with the ghost immunity is great you're you 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 are doubling up on the the dark and bug immunities which is unfortunate but um i think it's it's okay given what uh what else the indeed offers um i i really love following that up with a a really strong high value uh fighting type in in galarian zapdos it gives you a, a defiant user which will deter intimidate in case you want to use physical necrozma because necrozma is very uh very versatile you can run it physical or special with many different boosting moves um so that i think uh opens the door for a physical necrozma a little bit more um especially because you can max your zapdos and go for max knuckles next to your your necrozma if you want to um <clears throat> and uh i also really like the the addition of the uh Diggers be Lightheart and Crobat with with this team comp. Um, there's an Escavalier there too. We'll we'll get to that in in a minute. But um, the uh, Crobat is uh, really really helpful for stuff like Necrozma and Diggers be, which are uh, a, a little bit lacking in in the speed department. They uh, really need some strong speed control to do what they want to do. Uh, Diggers be Crobat is uh, obviously something that uh, I have a serious uh, connection with. I like it a lot. Um, and the ground typing really, really helps the uh, Necrozma mode um, hit some of those steel types, um, which Necrozma itself does have some coverage against steel types. Zapdos also hit, is, is going to be capable of uh, hitting steel types, um, but uh, it, it does add a little bit of extra synergy there, especially because you can Earthquake next to both Zapdos and Crobat. Um, so uh, I, I like that quite a bit. That The, the Diggers B and Zapdos really allow... Uh, allow Necrozma to just spam Psychic moves as much as it wants while they kind of take care of everything else that can't get hit by Psychic, uh, mainly uh, Dark and Steel. Um, <clears throat> and the Lie part, I think, is really cool here, too. Uh, at, at first, I was kind of, I was a little bit iffy on, on the Lie part because of the Psychic terrain, but then you remember it has Unburden, so uh, it's whether you want to go Prankster... Um, you know, fake tears with a, a special necrozma or something, or uh, or maybe if you're confident that you can keep your terrain up, you can even uh, just lead a DD necrozma and then either start attacking with necrozma or set up or something, and then after a DD dies, bring in your uh, unburdened psychic seed lipard. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, there's there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can you can do there, and I, I like the uh, the uh, addition of that. Uh, prankster slash unburdened user here it's 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 pretty cool um the escavalier is is good here i i like uh that he's keeping a trick room mode in mind it's a great speed tier um for a trick room sweeper uh the re the rest of the draft um it seems okay uh pulte geist next to indeedy seems fun i don't think it's really that essential uh the hail mode here um it seems fine it's a little bit out of place to me i don't i don't think he really uh benefits that much from a hail mode it seems fine you know uh there's this is one of two hail modes that were that were drafted this season and uh the other one i think there's a really really good reason for it on that team comp this one it's more just kind of it's there maybe it can do something it seems okay um but uh the, the stuff I really like about this draft is is that uh, that uh, necrozma comp. Um, the uh, my my only my only real gripes here are that he's uh, he's a little bit lacking in dark type offense. Um, the uh, light part's gonna gonna be able to use foul play, so in some cases that uh, that may be sufficient, but um, you know maybe not. 
Uh, and then his um, his trick room mode is I, I do like the escavalier there, um, but I think it's a little bit of a problem that Necrozma is his only trick room setter. Um, kind of like uh, I kind of like I mentioned with with Victini on on Dark's team, you don't always want your big heavy uh, tier one heavy hitter to be setting up trick room, even though Necrozma is a little bit slower than something like Victini, so maybe it can do okay in trick room itself. Um, but I would. Uh, I would really like to see one of those tier slots, tier three slots, filled with a, a, a more dedicated trick room setter, so that Necrozma has the flexibility to do other things um, when you're uh, when you're also bringing a trick room mode uh, in in any given week. Um, uh, I believe that's about it. Uh, yep, yeah, that's all I got. What do you guys think? So. I, I want to add on to this uh, Toxic's team in the ratings. When I was rating his team, I started with it much higher than when I eventually ended up with it because I think the team is really good. I just think some of the teams I put higher than it are better. But I do think that this team is really, really solid uh, and a definite easy playoff contender team. I also feel like I've got a lot of experience with this type of team because I've played a season with an NDDF uh, Zapdos G team before and really enjoyed it. And I'm currently playing a season with an NDDF Lipard, Crobat, Obama Snow, and Arcto team. So, which is a weird amount of overlap between the two teams. And it feels really good and really hard to prep for because of the synergy between the Lipard and the NDDF and then the Crobat being able to give you that consistent form of speed control as well so i think this is a really good team i think it's going to be really tough to prep for i think it's got a lot of solid modes uh there are a couple things that i think could be better namely the poltegeist and Sharpedo. i'm not sure exactly what they're going to be doing on this team but everything else makes me really like this team and i just think overall it's solid i mean there are parts of it that aren't spectacular but there's no part of it that's bad either like i'd just say overall this is solid from top to bottom and if toxic plays well with it he's going to do well and if he plays poorly with it he's going to do poorly uh, a lot more so than some other teams where they're either going to be giving their uh be giving their drafter the player uh, a head start in certain matchups or they're going to be dragging them back in certain matchups i think that this is just going to be like 50 50 matchups across the board where it's going to come down a lot to player skill uh but what about you two yeah uh, so week one go ahead ryan yeah so i won't say a whole lot i'm just gonna say i really like this team i think toxic is continuously getting better at drafting in the past, this team would have rated significantly higher, and I actually do think some coaches did sleep on it a little bit too hard. Um, that is my absolutely. Um, so I, I, I don't think it should be much higher than tenth. I think it should be in like, I think it should have aggregated like around eight to seven, but that feels correct for this team um, as its overall average to me, anyway. Um, so I just wanted to say that, uh, best of luck on a season. I'm going to kick your ass week one though. <laughs> so my main issue with this team, everything looks super solid. I think it's a little too dependent on the Ndidi. Um, for instance, if you have Ndidi and someone else just switches in their terrain or has a solid dark type or just is able to deal with maybe like spread uh dark moves which i know you snarl and stuff uh you have the zapdos for but if you look at the main offense indeedy is kind of the focal point to get those offenses rolling um outside of you know you can set up the tailwind with crowbat crowbat and kind of go off but then there's no real redirection um so i do think you might struggle a little bit once indeedy goes down if Ndidi is able to stay on the field and do what it needs to with solid play, maybe some protect reads, I do think you will just steamroll some people. But if Ndidi goes down early without really doing anything, um, I feel like this team will actually struggle extremely hard because your, your speed tiers aren't the greatest. Um, and you are, again, super dependent on that follow me and the terrain. Um, other than that, dude, why, why Sharpedo? Uh, you should have 100% went Crawdaunt there, uh, but that's Correct. a thing. Uh, if you can use Sharpedo, Correct. 
prove me wrong, but I do think Crawdont was just the superior water dark type there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just like to say before we, we move on, I think that the Lipart and Crobat take more than enough pressure off the Indeedee. This is a this is a style of team that I myself would draft, and looking at the options that he has, I can think of all kinds of stuff that would be more than viable that do not rely super heavily on, on the follow me. And in some cases, you, you might want the Indeedee to go down turn one so you can get a good support piece in next to something like Zapdos or Necrozma. That's my take on it. I, I like this team a lot. For the record, the three at the top, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I see it. I'm just, I just, that is my only gripe. It could, there could be a point where he's just a little too dependent on Indeedee. Um, but moving on, we should have Gumi next, and this will be Dan. Yeah, so Gumi is a new coach this season. Uh, Really strong player from the MBC and the GLDL. Uh, in fact, he and I played in the MBCE together as partners where we uh, took it down uh, this season. And I only bring that up because we had a Zeraora Volcanion team. Uh, and he, once again, has a Zeraora Volcanion team. Um, I'm just going to start with Volcanion being one of the best values in Tier 2 and one of the coolest Pokemon in this draft. Uh, Volcanion turned Matt into a version of Doc Rivers and a GIF just because it one shot while outspeeding a Max Blaziken just turn one of our match in the MBCE. So Volcanion hits like a truck, is very bulky, and is a water fire type that is water immune. Like, that thing's going to take some souls throughout the season, and Gumi's got enough practice with it that he knows what he's going to be doing with it. But looking at the rest of the team, we've got the Naganadel, the Grimmsnarl, the Tornadus T, uh, Vicavolt, Runarigus, Delmai, Skarmory, Avalog, and Polyrath. Uh, there are some really, really cool things that I like here. Uh, I think that he made really good use of his bottom tier options because the Grimmsnarl can swagger into the Avalog and there's a threatening trick room mode right there. Uh, the Tornadus T is one of the more underexplored draft pokemon like i really like seeing a draft and usually i try to tier it in tier three only to get yelled at and have it put in tier two and no one drafts it in tier two so i'm glad someone finally drafted it in tier two because it's a fast tailwind setter that also has good dual offenses regenerator ability u-turn pivoting and can be a max threat with really good coverage uh, so it does like six or seven things at, you know, a seven to eight out of 10 level. Nothing at a 10 out of 10 level, but it does a lot of things really well that's going to make it tough to prep for. Uh, Grimmsnarl, great value in the tier there. Uh, Naganadel is generally underwhelming, but with Tailwind uh, and the support around it, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a pass being an underwhelming uh, type there. But I do just think that the pieces that he has, the Zeraora, the Volcanion, the Torn, the Grim Snarl, and then his Trick Room mode with the Runarigus and Vicavolt and Delmise, I just think there are enough pieces there that this this team is going to be really threatening. And again, it's going to be really flexible, and I can see each Pokemon on this team coming. And I think this is the first team where I can say, like, I can see each Pokemon on this team coming pretty consistently as well maybe not the polyrath but everything else i can see coming very very consistently throughout the season so i just think it's a very well put together team it has some threatening modes it has some individually incredibly powerful pokemon good for their value uh i do think that you it doesn't want to eat a max quake and that's my biggest problem with this team is zero and volcanion don't want to eat max quakes nagonadel really doesn't want to eat a max quake uh, Tornadus T, it can be physical, but it's going to run special sets a lot, so it doesn't like seeing Max Quakes come up. Vicavolt, same thing, it doesn't like seeing the Max Quakes come up. And I think that's where my main problem with this team is, that even though it does have, you know, that Tornadus for that immunity, uh, it, it just feels a little too specially oriented and ground weak. Just the, the intersection of the two, and that's the one thing that kept this team out of the top five in my personal rankings. I had it higher than ninth. But uh, I think it's I think it's a solid team, and I think he's going to do well with it. But uh, what about you guys? Yeah, so I'm going to be actually real quick with this. You touched on it. My only gripe, and is the biggest gripe that kept me out of putting this team any higher, I put it eighth, was 
your main offense is weak to ground, and then your supporting offensive pieces are special. Um, so it doesn't really bode too well, and you don't have any redirection. So if you're unless you're switching, you're eating those hits, um, and that doesn't feel great. Granted, you are switching Tornadus, Vika Volt, and Skarmory into those hits. Um, but if you make the wrong switch and they go somewhere else, you're just not going to be doing any damage um, to probably the opposing team's biggest offensive threat. Um, and that, that was really my only uh, real issue with this. Also, I love Volcanion, and it has merit to be a really, really good value pick in Tier 2. I just feel like it's so awkward to max. Um, you almost have to go into the match saying, okay, I'm only clicking water moves, or okay, I'm only clicking fire moves, uh, or else it's max options just feels a little weird to me. Granted, I've never used it, um, so I could be way wrong, but in my eyes, it just feels kind of awkward. Um, so that, that's all I got for Gumi. Uh, one of you guys take. I definitely agree that the Volcanian is a, is a very weird max option, um, but I think on a team like this where you are... You've got plenty of other stuff to max, and they're they're going to be good next to the Volcanion. I think that's actually fine. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go through the whole season without maxing that thing at all. Like you, you still might. There might be some matchups where it's like, okay, I'm I'm fine not clicking water moves here, so I can just uh, flare and keep the sun up, and that's cool. Um, and you you still have other coverage moves that the Volcanion can use um, while you have one of those weathers up. It has it, it gets sludge bomb and earth power flash cannon so um you can do that stuff too um i uh i really like this this chunk of like naganadel grimmsnarl volcanian and, and tornadus i really like the way all those uh work together especially the the three sweepers with the grimmsnarl i think those are great um the zera aura up top i'm super not sold on that i don't really think it like it it doesn't fit that great with anything else um you know it's it's fine but uh it just it's adding another ground weakness and i i think it's kind of an underwhelming uh underwhelming pokemon when you don't have any kind of intimidate deterrent um but i do like the chunk uh below that i'm i'm with dan i really like seeing uh, uh tornado Therian here it's also a mod that i i've been looking forward to seeing in draft for a long time i i've wanted to draft it a few times but just never really had the team for it um, and I'm also really looking forward to seeing uh, both Skarmory and Avalug. Um, Avalug is, is a weird mon, but it's got a very usable attack stat, and I believe it's uh, under 30 base speed, so um, despite the, the shittiness of, of the pure ice typing, it, it actually has some potential to be a good uh, Trick Room Sweeper, and Skarmory is, is something that's pretty... Um, pretty cool here too i think it's going to end up functioning a lot like uh like a corviknight will just without the uh the mirror armor but um uh iron defense body press stuff tailwind options that that seems pretty cool and and it, yeah it does add a add a uh ground immunity because i'm i'm with you guys i'm very concerned about the uh uh ground weaknesses here especially since so much of your offense is special but um the uh fake tears from grimsnarl does help with that so we'll see how he uh how he mitigates that um, I'm sure he has some plans for Zara Aura. I don't know, man. I would, I would scrap it personally. Okay. Uh, I like this team. I think it's pretty good. Um, I like it the more I look at it, which is something that I can't say about every team. Um, I don't know. It feels like it has the right utility. I, unlike some teams that were lower than it, where I was like, I don't know how the support helps the top. On this team, it's very evident to me how the bottom supports the top through line the draft. And while I am a little, I'm not, I'm concerned about those ground types. I don't think I'm quite as concerned. Uh, one mom you guys haven't mentioned yet is Polyrath. I stand that thing. Polyrath better be coming to hit in the field. It's got some cool stuff. Very excited for that. Um, I also thought I also think Skarm's really cool. I think I think it benefits a lot from transfer getting Tailwind um, in this format, and I'm also a uh, Torrenti. Uh, very excited for that. Uh, definitely one of the drafts that I think took 
high advantage of the fact that we're running a mythical season and really is playing with a bunch of stuff that um, we really haven't seen as much usage out of. So I'm very excited for this team. I think it's going to be really cool. Moving on, Ryan, you're going to keep going and you're going to cover Jessica. Yeah, so Jess has the range of 2 to 16, um, which, yeah, that's that's range, all right. Um, the team is Mew, Garchomp, Miniku, Togetic, uh, Snorlax, G-Max, Darude, Moltres, Magnezone, Vaporeon, Toxicroak, Aurorus. Um, so this team has Mew, and Mew is low-key one of the best Pokemon in the format, um, in my opinion, um, having access to all of its moves with transfer um, with someone like Jess prepping with it is an absolute nightmare. Uh, that thing is just an absolute threat. It absolutely deserved first pick overall, in my opinion. Um, I think it is like easy top three mod in the format. Um, so I'm very excited to see that. Um, Garchomp as your dragon type seems pretty okay on this team. Um, we've seen Garchomp uh, do fairly well in the past. Uh, then we have the Mimikyu Togetic, which Jess always gets. No one ever snipes her on those. Um, it's just the rules of life. Um, I actually finally had a chance to use Togetic and Mimikyu both for separate entire seasons. Um, I'm a huge fan of Mimikyu on this specific comp. Um, I think it is, un hands down, one of the most underrated Tier 2 Pokemon and one of the best support pieces in draft. Uh, Disguise is just busted, and that thing's move pool and stat spread was amazing to work with. Um, I think that's going to offer a lot of this team's viability. I also really like the Shadow Sneak proc with Mew, with Mew as well. Um, then we have the Snorlax Togetic uh, kind of Trick Room mode, which I think is pretty good. Um, I like that Mimikyu is the Trick Room setter with Snorlax for reasons I won't spoil, um, but that feels pretty threatening. Uh, then we have this Rude Moltres, uh, kind of adding to the fast mode. Togetic does get Tailwind in this format, and it's actually decently consistent at clicking it. Um, so that's nice. Moltres is a really cool Pokemon I've been wanting to see for a long time in this uh, league. That is a nice Airstream booster. Uh, Magnezone's the most matchup dependent mon you'll ever see. Vaporeon, I had a lot of success with when I used it. I think it's a great supportive uh, water type. I think it complements... Um, some of the top picks pretty well, and Aurorus with Hail uh, feels to me less so than like, oh, Aurorus is good, and more like, uh, there's a lot of weather in my division, and I want to anti Weathermon with my last pick, which seems pretty fair. Um, I personally felt that one thing with this team that for me um, was a little scary um, is the sheer number of 4x weak mons on it. Um, Garchomp, Zarude, Moltres, Magnezone, Toxicroak, and Aurorus all have 4x weaknesses. Aurorus has two. Um, which I think kind of is why some of the results are polarized. You see some pretty low numbers, and I think some of those come from folks a little more worried about the defensive synergy. Um, and I do think that the offensive synergy is good, but I do worry about taunt into some of it. I think, like, Togetic in particular, I'm a little worried about getting taunted here and there. Uh, but overall, I mean, God, the the sheer power that this draft is pressuring um, is pretty impressive. Um, and I think its Trick Room mode and its faster offensive mode are both very viable. And a lot of the picks do synergize well and support each other relatively well through, through line the draft. Um, so I'm very excited to see this team. Um, I think the thing I'm most convinced on is like the top couple the top like five picks with the trick room mode with the mute Garchomp, I think is the thing I think is the best on this team. Um, and then I feel like there's just a few too many 4X weaknesses for me um, defensively rounding out some of the team. So floor is open. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add in a little bit here. Um, I used Garchomp last season and... I really liked it as a secondary offensive attacker. Anytime when I felt like I needed to bring Garchomp and lead it and make that my main max threat, I just felt like the whole time, like, I'm just going to eat an Ice Beam and I'm just going to die. I'm just going to eat an Ice Beam and I'm just going to die. Uh, and But uh, I had a Primarina on the team, which made it a lot better to attack with the Garchomp because they have to deal with the Primarina and then I can just have the Garchomp come in and clean stuff up. I 
really like a lot of Jess's team, but that Garchomp itself, I'm afraid, might be leveraged too much for a lot of the immediate damage output. Like, Garchomp and Magnezone, and I guess Moltres as well, are the main forms of immediate damage output. And Garchomp is far and away the best one of those. But with Garchomp being far and away your best form of immediate damage output, I just think it might be a little soft to just having the tech move for the Garchomp. Uh, I'm less experienced with Mew, so if Mew also has that immediate damage output potential, uh, then that will mitigate some of the problems that I have. And I know Mew has, you know, perfect coverage, obviously. But that that's the main sticking point for me, is that all three of the immediate damage output mons are uh, 4x weak. And I don't know, that just leaves me feeling just a little bit iffy about this team and it seems like this team in particular is more weak to tech moves than some other teams but i do like a lot of the synergy on this team and i do think it's a very very solid team with some really good setup options as well but uh what do you, maxwell and matt what do you guys think yeah so the forex weaknesses do pose an issue but if you look they're all different uh, relative, I mean, fucking Aurorus. But they're all oh, different. I don't count Aurorus as a Pokemon. Uh, no. Agreed. Um, uh, <laughs> so, they're all different. So, are you teching four moves on one Mon? Are you having to spread that out? Then if one gets dealt with, the other Mon just kind of goes in. Are you teching correctly? Maybe you tech for the Moltres and Moltres doesn't come and now you just wasted a slot. I'm not as big on the four time weaknesses as uh, you guys in a single season I ran a whole bunch of years ago. I ran a mono four times week team and it gave a lot of people a lot of prepping issues. But uh, Mew, Mimikyu, Togetic, Snorlax, um, I'm just gonna say yes. Uh, there's a lot that that combo of four mons can do and it is absolutely terrifying. If you remember, I think it was 2016, uh, this is true Mimilax now. Uh, when she drafted it prior, it wasn't true Mimilax. Uh, this is. So good yeah. luck and watch out for that. Uh, Matt with the Crow of Judgment. Yeah, so uh, incoming Crow of Judgment here. Um, I, I like, Maxwell, that you uh, ended on that last note with that, that combination of four mons, the Mew, Mimikyu, Togetic, and Snorlax. Because holy shit, I love that too. Um, it's there, you can you can put any two of those next to each other, and there's really cool shit you can do, and it's basically always going to be extremely dangerous. Um, I, I like it a lot. There's a lot of good type synergy there. They they support each other well. Um, very versatile, very tough to prep against because you have a lot of things that that, that they can do. Um, and then following that up with with Zerud is is great. I've used Mew with. Zerud before. Um, the only issue there is Zerud is, is kind of one-dimensional. Um, it pretty much just hits the field and it attacks. And it has it, it has some good coverage and it as a dark type it works well with Mew. Uh, it can um, you can uh, you're using it as a grass type too so Fire, Water, Grass, Core is a good piece for that. Uh, I like the Moltres with it. Um, they're uh, they're, they're kind of similar in what they, what they want to do. Moltres is a good uh, max airstream sweeper. Um, they both got pretty well-rounded stats. Um, I, I like that a lot. The, 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 one, the one big gripe I have about this as a, a Mew comp is the lack of a fighting type, because Toxicroak is not going to be able to keep up with Mew and Zeru. It's just not. Um, uh, I, I think, to me, the, the choice, um, the choice for, for what should have been in that Garchomp slot was incredibly obvious. That needs to be Rapid Strike or Shifu. Um, Vaporeon is not, uh, it, it's, it's not really a great water type to pair with Zerud and Moltres. Um, it's not really doing what they want to do, but Rapid Strike Urshifu is, uh, it's, it's, uh, got around the same kind of speed stat. It's, it's got well-rounded legendary stats. Um, it's, it's going to do what you want to do. And, and the fighting type is going to help, uh, round out that fighting psychic, uh, dark core with the, the Mew and the Zerud. Um, I, I... I wholeheartedly believe that, that is that is the right choice there. I know that she's trying to fill out some some more of uh, uh, more of her types, and Garchomp gave her two extra types that 
uh, she didn't already have, but um, I, I just, I don't think that's worth it at all. I think you, you scrap the Vaporeon, maybe even the Toxic Rogue. I don't know what you put in those slots, but you, you definitely replace that Garchomp with, with Rapid Striker, as you feel. All right, moving on, Dan, you're going to cover Charles. Yeah, so Charles's team uh, is the Genesect team. Uh, Charles wanted to ban Genesect before the season, so he was must have been very happy when it fell to him, and he pretended to look at other options and take a minute, but we all knew he was going to take Genesect. Yeah, to the that, was, that was unanimous. I think literally I DM'd Dan. I was like, okay, so Genesect's off the board. Like, yeah, yeah, Charles is taking Genesect. Yeah. Uh, but he also has Tapu Lele, Blastoise, Terrakian, Celebi, Driftblim, Weavile, Nidoqueen, Jolteon, Turtonator, and Ondino. So the first thing I notice is Blastoise is the redirector, and I normally like Blastoise for having a lot of flexibility. Here it's going to be pigeonholed a lot more to the support sets than some of those more offensive sets, because it is the only redirector on this team, unlike the other Blastoise team where there's a secondary redirector that can also be used in that role. But I hate that less than uh, some other people in this call. Like, I think Tapu Lele Driftblim is absolutely a great fast mode base uh, that complements the Genesect decently well. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about Celebi, but I can believe in it. I think the Terrakian Weavile forces prep. I think Nidoqueen and Jolteon are both really good special offensive options in the tier. Audino is a decent trick room setter for its tier as well, and next to a Blastoise, I think that's going to be a fairly consistent trick room, even though your trick room mode isn't very fleshed out. Like, the Turtonator itself isn't going to be great under trick room. Maybe a uh, room service Nidoqueen could work under trick room. But I think this team has a very consistent tailwind, a very consistent and powerful fast mode, and that's what this team's really going to bank on, is... Uh, Genesect, Lele, Driftblim, Blastoise. I think that those four are going to be his, his most common four that he's bringing all the time. And I just think that there is a lot of power on both the physical and special side on this team. A lot of offensive capabilities. And although there are some obvious defensive uh, shortages and uh, it can probably be exploited by Trick Room as well, I just think that this team hits as hard or harder than every other team in the format, and it's going to just take some names as a result of that. But uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, so my main issue with this is Trick Room. Uh, with Turtonator being your really only Trick Room mod, um, good luck. Uh, I've tried using Turtonator before, uh, and it is absolutely terrible. Uh, if you want to set a, a Shell Smash, you're no longer a Trick Room mod. Uh, and other than that, your offenses aren't wonderful. Um, and then Audino is just kind of subpar. You can't really do anything offensively other than just set the trick room. Um, so if I'm if I'm going against Charles, I am 100% setting trick room. Even if I don't really have a trick room mode, I'm setting trick room. Um, which I do think might be an issue. Uh, again, I hearken back to the... If you're going to redirect <clears throat> for a mon hopefully it doesn't have a four times weakness that'll just blow it back uh and it of course does genesec but other than that his setup options are super super good i wish there was something else that could redirect for the blastoise because i do think this team would be absolutely amazing if blastoise could set up a shell smash uh but it is going to be pigeonholed into that supporting role uh and then with the the lele drift blim again trick room is going to be an option uh if you want to sweep with a Lele or something, Blastoise can't fake out. Um, so you just got to kind of eat hits and fight your Trick Room matchups uh, when they appear. And if you can't do that, it's going to be an issue because I do think Trick Room will be set up on you probably almost every game you play. Um, but that's that's really it. Other than that, this is a solid team. Solid offenses on both sides uh, and decent support options. Again, just... Trick room, trick room is a worry for me. So uh, why don't one of you two go ahead and take it? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat on the trick room thing. I don't, I don't want to, you know, repeat, ex you know, what you guys said. I'll just say I, I very strongly agree about your, your uh, assessment of this team's uh, matchup against opposing trick room. Um, that being said, I, 
I do really like uh, a lot of what Charles has going on, you know, fast mode wise. Um, a lot of good synergy, a lot of power, uh, a lot of good combinations. Um, uh, I, I think the uh, Weavile Terrakion with uh, with the beat up stuff is, is kind of a, an unsuspecting little combination here that's, um, you know, lurking, waiting, uh, waiting to come out and, and surprise somebody. Um, uh, and then uh, the, I, I guess the only um, the only real gripe here I have is is kind of the lack of a, of a fire type to pair with um, Blastoise and Celebi because Turtonator is not cutting it. Um, Celebi and Blastoise are, are going to work very well together, and, and Celebi is something that I'm really really excited to see. It's not something I've seen uh, drafted before, but it has a lot of really cool options, very versatile, uh, a lot of different setup options, and I think it's going to be great next to that Blastoise. Um, but I, I would like to see a more uh, uh, a, a bulkier and mid to mid to high range speed fire type uh, that can that can hang with those two. That would be that that would be nice. Um, this is, I think, the most hyper offensive team on the draft. I think it is. This team's goal is to blitz you. Um, and it seems like the lead matchup's pretty hard. Um, in theory, he's got fake out. He's got terrain with that tailwind. He's got that. You have to be. You have to prep for just Paraki and Weefile trying to sweep you. Like I feel like it's very, very hyperly offensive. Um, so you're, the tricky part against this team is definitely the lead matchup. But I feel like if you can crack down a good lead that covers most options, I feel like you're in an okay position. Um, but I feel like if you can't or you don't have the tools to, this team will absolutely just roll you. Um, and I also think Genesect is one of the better mons available. Uh, this is very similar to the type of Genesect team I tried um, when I was I was considering drafting Genesect myself. And this was very similar to something I came up with. So I think it's a really well-constructed team. All right, moving on next. Matt, you are going to cover Raz. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, I really fucking love this team. Um, this is, uh, this is probably my favorite Metagross comp I've ever seen in draft. Um, and this is coming from somebody who drafted Metagross before, so, uh, hats off to Raz for that. Um, he's, uh, he's got the obvious combination of, uh, Tornadus Metagross here. Metagross, uh, being a base 70 mon with, uh, crazy offenses and defenses, Loves that priority tailwind, uh, the brutal swing into weakness policy with with the clear body on on Metagross, really devastating. It's just a it's a great combination, one that I had when I had Metagross as well. So um, super good there. Uh, I I love uh, the the type cores that he's creating here um, with uh, with the Metagross. He's got the uh, psychic dark uh, fighting core with the Metagross Keldeo and and uh, Grim Snarl. Um, <clears throat> and he's creating another uh, Fairy Dragon Steel Core with the Metagross, Grimmsnarl, and, and Reggie Drago. Um, I love the way that Grimmsnarl works with basically everything here, uh, even Metagross, even though it's, uh, you know, a lot of what Grimmsnarl wants to do is, is Prankster Fake Tears for some for a special Maximon, and um, Keldeo and Tornadus both uh, fit the bill there. Um, even Reggie Drago, whether you're maxing it or not, great with uh, with Grimmsnarl, good uh, type synergy. Um, you got uh, Fake Tears, Thunder Wave um, to, to support that thing. Uh, I, I I just, I love all of this here. And then the, the coming in with uh, Elect Buzz as the redirector, is super, super nice. When I was running Metagross, I had Clefable as my redirector, which was great. I love Clefable. But the problem with Clefable next to a big physical... Uh, Maximon is that it's it's too easy to just click Steel Spike into it, and you know, even if you protect Clefable or you're running Babiri Berry on it, whatever you live the hit, you know, um, it's your opponent still uh, still has an easy target for those max Steel Spikes, and then suddenly your Metagross is not as useful when it's hitting into something with a plus one plus two defense. Um, but the Electabuzz uh, being uh, resistant to Steel um, really really uh, helps uh, it, it's going to help metagross uh kind of go unchecked um if he if he's just able to lead you know follow me next to like a big life orb metagross or something um he can uh he, he, he can he can kind of just go off with that and, and electabuzz is also deceptively fast i think it's like 105 base speed 
and it has Electro Web, so it's actually maybe going to be decent speed control for the Metagross as well. Um, and then uh, then coming in with the Marowak, which Marowak with, with Tornadus, uh, I absolutely love. It's something I've used in draft uh, at least twice now. Um, it's it's the beginning of, of uh, solid Trick Room mode, and if you want to run fast whack with, with Tornadus, super, super good. Very, very viable. Um, I, I like it a lot. The the uh, the the only pick that kind of loses me here is the Trevenant. Um, I've I've talked about Trevenant a lot. I think we all know how I feel about it. Kind of a garbage trick room setter, uh, especially when there's um, a lot of other really good stuff on the board in tier three. Uh, I get that he doesn't have a, tr a, a grass type yet, but uh, grass type trick room setters are are really tough to work with. Trevenant just does not have the, the stats. Um, there's, I, I think there's several things on the board that would uh, that would work better than than Trevenant. Maybe you can find a a, a grass type somewhere else, or you know, maybe you don't even need one. You know, you got two really awesome type cores up top. Not every team needs a firewater grass core. You know, you, you don't have to fill out every every single core. So, um, I I would probably switch that out, and that would make the team a lot. Uh, a, a lot better more it, it would it would give you a much much more solid trick room mode Toracat's kind of cool um i I'm, I'm glad to see uh somebody actually draft it in <clears throat> in a uh doubles format because i've I, I believe i've i've only really seen it uh uh try to work in in a multi-battle format which doesn't do as well there but um uh, it looks pretty cool here uh hopefully the the intimidate and kind of support stuff and uh fake out can can do some stuff. I believe that's his only fake out user here. Um, so I'll be interested to see how that works, but mostly it's just it's this middle and top stuff that I, I really, really love. I, I love the synergy, I love the combinations, I love everything around the Metagross and Grimmsnarl stuff. Really great, love it. Uh, um, bro, Grimmsnarl gets fake out. <laughs> does, I never run fake out on, on Grimmsnarl, so I, I forget about that sometimes. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I just got back from ping. So, uh, I have no idea what Matt said, but this is one of my favorite <laughs> Metagross teams. That um, is what I said. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that's, uh, I think we're all going to say that. Two, two, for the record, two of Raz's highest ratings are two of us. Two of the four. Three. Or, three of the four. Four of the oh, four. Oh, three of the four. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I gave him I gave him like a third or a fourth, I think. Yeah, I think this is an easy top five team. I, have, I think I put him third. I, I gave him it. one. Um, the yeah, one is for me. I, Matt, Matt's the <laughs> highlight is what I gave him one of his seconds. Yeah. Uh, so um, we're obviously all big stands of this team. Uh. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. There are some decent holes. Like, if you can't really get Tailwind up, I feel like you might struggle a little bit, but you do have, like, Thunder Wave yeah. and a really good Follow Me Eevee Alight user. Granted, you also have Tornadus, so if you can't get Tailwind up, you, there's something wrong with you. Well, I mean, fair. But <laughs> your redirector fair. is also weak to ground. I think that is my only, like, big gripe. Because um, you're not really going to want to redirect it from the Metagross. to just click an Earthquake. Um, but other than that, this team is solid. It is top five, maybe top three potential. Um, so I think some of y'all are sleeping on it. I see you, whoever ranked it 13th uh, and 14th. Sorry, but you're wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. This this team should not be that. Yeah. And it's if, it's really good. Yeah, there are with, some teams that I think you could make some arguments could have some low rankings as well. But I think this is like the most obviously good team in the draft. Yeah, and uh, for people who follow my channel, you know how high I am on Frostmoth as a low tier pick, and I think it works absolutely phenomenal here. Um, I, I I just love Frostmoth, and I'm I'm glad uh, it's gonna get some youth use because I know Raz builds a little um, unconventionally, and in order to run a Frostmoth, you have to be kind of unconventional. Um, so yeah, just overall solid team. Uh, good on you, Raz. I knew you kind of <laughs> said you were gonna struggle drafting. Uh, you definitely did not. So uh, good good on you. Yeah. Uh, one of you two. This team. This team is very 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 good. Um. One criticism I've heard about this team that I actually do agree with to an extent, um, not wholly, but what, the only critique I've heard of this team where I've been like, okay, yeah, I kind of see it, is some people have been like, the team's pretty linear, like, in terms of, like, what each mon does and what its role is, like, 
there is some linearity to this team. Um, Metagross is the main mode, right? Like, obviously, he has things like Keldeo, Drago, Marowak, Frostmoth, but, like, that Metagross is the main mode, and it's the thing that is getting the most support. So a few coaches were like, I don't know how I feel about putting a lot of those resources into that one Pokemon. Um, I think Metagross is absolutely 100% worth all those resources, um, and I don't have any real issue with it. I think it's a very good comp um, overall, so I'm very excited to see uh, Raz use it. Also, Torcat kind of sucks. I used it for a whole season. I was not a fan, but maybe he can make it work a lot better than me. Damn. All right. Oh yeah, I. I mean, I've I said my part. This is obvious top five team. Uh, anyone who has it rated ten or lower is objectively wrong, and even like results notwithstanding on how the season might go because Raz is in a very very competitive division like this team by itself is amazing and it's gonna let him be solid throughout the season 100 percent, 100 percent. now i have to scroll up here figure out who is next uh ryan you're gonna have anthony yeah, Anthony's got a really interesting team. Highest rating 1, uh, lowest 14. Uh, the team is Dragapult, Venusaur G-Max, Barraskewda, Colossal, Ninetales, Riolu, Maustic, Diancie, uh, Scizor, uh, Scolipede, and Greedent. Um, this is an interesting team in that I think it benefits from some of the tools um, that kind of got added. Uh, like, for example, on this team, Riolu is the main redirector. Uh, it gets plus 3, uh, follow me, with the Prankster boost which is super, super cool. Um, in addition to like the kind of coaching stuff we've seen it do in the past, I think like coaching Riolu Dragapult is just something everyone has to prep for and it's super and fucking annoying. Um, and then you've got the strong weather mode, uh, G-Max, Venusaur, and Ninetales is drafted last season. It didn't do the best, uh, but that might've also been because it was a bit of a newer coach kind of handling it. Uh, Anthony is a very experienced player. I'm very interested to see what he does with this uh, Nine Tails Venial combo. Uh, Barraskewda is really good um, in a draft where every team gets redirection for basically free. Having something that ignores it is crazy good. And Barraskewda is a nice pick for that. I think he wanted something that was a little more physically offensive in that slot, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Meowstic, I think, is a super underrated prankster user. It has a lot of really, really, really good stuff in its move pool. Um, and for where it's at in the budget, I think it's solid. Um, now, as for Greedent and Scolipede, I'm not sure what Scolipede does. I think it's the spiciest pick on this draft uh, to steal from the VBA for a second. I'm very curious to see. I know it has like baton pass speed boost stuff. Uh, but you already have a bug type uh, with the scissor, so I'm not really sure what offensive presence it gives you. Um, and Greedent is a belly drum trick room user. Uh, my real things with this and Deancey is also your trick room setter, um, which I think is fine. Um, my only real concern with this team is that um, I'm just not sure how I feel about some of the... Um, I feel like the offense is like pretty like set in stone on this team. And there is a little bit of anti-synergy here and there. Like, you know, if you have Ninetales Venu, then Scizor looks a little scarier because all of a sudden, even through Akka, Max Flare is gonna Oko you completely. Um Dragapult does a lot, a lot, a lot on this team, both with the surf proc, with the Riolu setting it up, with just setting itself up breaking swipe screen stuff. I actually think it's the real glue piece that ties this team together for me and made me really like it. Um, it's very cohesive. I'm a little worried about some of the frailty of some of the team overall. Um, this team is not as bulky as some of the other teams that we've kind of seen before it. Um, and it has a few known quantities. I really like it though. I think this is a very solid team. Um, I had it in my, I had it in my top five. Um, and I'm excited to see it get played and used. Uh, Matt, why don't you go ahead? Sure. Uh, I don't. I don't think I'm going to say too much here. Um, but uh, for, for those of you who don't know uh, Anthony, uh, he is my roommate, and he's also my uh, teammate in uh, MBC Multi Battle Conference. Um, he's a very experienced VGC player. He's been playing for uh, quite a few years. Um, 
and uh, we are uh, we're both uh, NBC former NBC champions. Um, he knows very well what he's doing in, in Pokemon and, and in draft. So um, for anyone who was previously not familiar with him, uh, don't sleep on him just because he's new to uh, to MDL. He's um, he's going to have a pretty strong showing. Uh, and I, I was also his uh, his front office for uh, for this draft because he's uh, uh, I'm I'm in a position where I may actually be taking over for him with this team later on in the season. We don't really know that yet. We'll, we'll kind of we're gonna kind of play that by ear, but um, we will <clears throat> we will let everybody know if and when that that happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not really gonna say a whole lot about this team because I know. A lot of the the ins and outs of what uh, what he wants to do with it. Um, there's uh, quite a few things that we're uh, we're expecting to use that haven't been mentioned here yet. Um, so I'll I'll keep those uh, keep those a secret for now. Um, if you guys mention them, then well, that's what happens. That's fine. Uh, but a lot of what we wanted to do was um, draft kind of some stuff that uh, I think. Anthony is already familiar with, and also uh, draft some stuff that's that's a little bit newer to uh, to both of us. Um, we we were pretty late in the draft, so we didn't actually get to pick up one of the uh, one of the new uh, legendaries or, or mythicals. But uh, we had a pretty good idea for what we wanted to do with a Dragapult type uh, team comp, and we kind of got uh, kind of got everything we wanted. Um, and uh, and we got uh, we get to use a, a new mythical with uh, DNC down there in, in tier three instead of one of the uh, one of the big tier one uh, mythicals. So that's that's good enough for me. So um, this team looks uh, looks really fun. Um, a lot of things I can see happening with it, uh, but I will uh, leave it there for now. Uh, Dan, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, uh, this team looks fun. I'm excited to see some of the Colossal Sun things that I think I'm seeing uh, forming in Matt's head right now that look, that look like they could be a lot of fun. Uh, I think that it's got solid offenses. It's probably the most glass cannon-y of any of the teams, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as the glass cannon shoots first and shoots harder. Uh, I am a little worried about Trick Room. Like, I know Greedent is a decent Trick Room answer, but I don't see Greedent coming every week to dissuade Trick Room because you're going to want to use all six slots a lot of the time for one of the more offensive modes. Uh, so I do think that certain weeks, Trick Room is going to be an exploitable answer against this team. Uh, and I do think if you are able to out-bulk this team, you're going to be able to outlast this team. This is a team that wants the battles to end in, like, four or five turns and if it starts making it into the seven eight range then uh, it might start having some issues but those are really minor critiques and i think we're getting to the point where all of the teams we're looking at are objectively really good except for one that is potentially questionable coming up uh but i i, I like it i think that my critiques are going to be a little nitpicky about it but i think overall it's going to be very solid yeah, so my main critique um, is I feel like it might be a little too combo-centric. Um, you know, you got the Dragapult Colossal, Ninetales Venusaur. Um, those those are your main offensive modes. I know they're not always going to have to come together. Like, Ninetales doesn't always have to be brought with Venusaur. Uh, Dragapult doesn't always have to set up the Colossal. Uh, but I do feel like that could sometimes be an issue. Like, everybody's going to be prepping for those combos, no matter what. And if you don't, you're kind of dumb. Um, because those combos will just run through a team. Um, but with that being said, th this team's solid. If you don't prep right, you're just going to lose probably in three turns. Um, so, yeah, I really like this team. Uh, not really much else to say. Um, but the next one will be covered by me. And this is Dan, um, with a high of 1, which was himself, and a low of 12. Uh, this team's just solid. Um, Zamazenta Kirum, really good 1-2 uh, punch with two very new mons. Uh, with the Primarina, a comfort pick that is just so good. Um, I don't think it's as good here as it was last season. Um, but Silvalli now getting Tailwind is really cool. Uh, Gigalith, Magmortar, 
with the follow me sableye rotom fan gorgeist stoutland and steelix um, so you do kind of have an unconventional sand mode but my main issue with this team is zamazenta is so good but you can't max it so people are going to just immediately know hey that's not going to be the max option um pre-marina without the tornadus um i've ran a pre-marina in season two without priority tailwind and uh it just felt kind of awkward sometimes 60 is kind of an awkward place to be um and so valley's not the fastest thing in the world granted it could be ghost tailwind so you can't fake it out but uh overall I feel like you're going to be pigeonholed into just Kiram and Primarina as your max options, which there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but it could be kind of centralizing. And then uh, the Sableye. As good as the Sableye is, I don't really know what it's going to be doing um, other than some quash shenanigans, um, but I am a big believer in Sableye. Dan is a hell of a battler, really good builder, so I'm, I'm confident that all these pieces are going to fall into place. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. The one, two, three, four. The top four in Mag Mortar are probably coming every week. Um, so I just hope there's a little bit more diversity. And that's really my only gripe. Other than that, this is a solid team. Um, so why doesn't someone other than Dan go ahead? Yeah. All right. This team, it has Kiram. So it is... Um, not the best team, but it is my favorite team because it has Kiram. So I really got a compliment, Dan. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. The sand mode um, with the Stoutland Gigalith is kind of neat with the Steelix also kind of backing that up. It's a little unconventional. I'm curious to see how it'll work out. Uh, but we know Gigalith Sand is just a really threatening thing. Maxwell had a tear with it last season. Um, so I'm pretty confident that'll do well for you. Uh, so Valley gets transfer Tailwind, which is dumb as hell. Um, other than that, I think it's a nice glue piece. I think this team needed um, something that could change typings to flexibly um, to kind of glue some of the defensive synergy together. I think Slow Valley does that pretty well here. Um, a lot of how you feel about this team really depends on how you feel about Zamazenta. Um, personally speaking, I'm not super sold on Zamazenta. Um, I feel like a lot of its role is that it's like Lucario, but a little better. Uh, but Lucario gets inner focus redirection, so Lucario might be might be potentially similar. Um, that's kind of been my vibe with it. Like I was looking at its offensive stats, and yeah, they're pretty good. It's got a ridiculous speed tier, holy shit! Um, and it's got coaching and other stuff. So like, it definitely supports everything well. But it is one of the tier one picks. So like, as being one of the tier one picks, and seeing as it can't max that limits Dan's other max options and his other max options in my mind while pretty good um I'm not sure they're quite enough for me um I feel like it's the Kiram Primarina are going to be it most of the time you might see a max Sil valley once in a blue moon but I feel like it'll be more supportive most of the time this team kind of needs it in a more supportive role um Gigalith will could definitely max Magmortar could max I don't think it will very often though because Magmortar is um bad unless you randomly run belly drum with it apparently um Rotom Fan is a good max option that will definitely see. Max Stoutland will definitely happen. Max Steelix will probably happen at some point. Um and Sableye's nice. It helps you a bit with the trick room matchup, which I feel like is a little potentially iffy, but but between Giggle and Sableye, I feel like it's gonna be okay. And Pre Marina can run like Iron Ball and Room Service and kind of help you out there too. Um solid team. Um I definitely don't know how I feel about it 100%. Um, this, a lot, a, a couple of, um, like this team where it's at, if you look at like its sides on the right, Dan's team is here by virtue of the fact that it has a lot of like pretty good placements in a draft where in a PR list where most teams did not have a lot of pretty good placements. Um, like it doesn't have an overwhelming number of ones and twos and threes there's even teams before that had more ones and twos and threes like the past couple teams i think did but it has like consistently most people think it's pretty solid um so that's kind of where it ended up here and that's kind of my uh so i'm i'm ryan i'm gonna go back to something that you said a little bit earlier which is that uh how you feel about this team 
depends a lot on how you feel about Zamazenta, and I think I agree with that, um, which is why I have no fucking idea how good this this team is actually going to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I like that, when, that was my thought. I was like, I don't know how yeah. I feel about Zamazenta. It was very hard to judge and like this team, uh, right? Of that pick. Um, there's just there's so many there's so many mons here that I'm really excited to see being used, but I have no idea. I mean, it's for some of them I have some idea, but for a lot of them I have no idea how good they're actually going to be. Zamazenta, super excited to see it, no idea how good it is. Kira, super excited to see it, no idea how good it is. Uh, Silvali, Rotom Fan, Stoutland, those th those I have a, a better idea of, of how they're going to do, but I'm still very excited to see all of them come into play here. Uh, I, I, I was looking at this team pretty early on when I was... Um, when I was deciding on, on my power rankings, and I was just, like, so confused by it because there's two mons up top that I just, I don't know enough about yet that I decided, like, okay, you know what? I don't care where I'm placing everybody else in these power rankings. I'm giving Dan number eight. I'm just putting him squarely in the middle because I don't fucking know. Um, and I, I think that, sh that that sums up the, the essence of how I feel about this team right now. But I'm... Uh, this is another team that gets the crow of judgment. I'm very hopeful that it's good because there's a lot of cool shit here, and I'm very excited to see some of Dan's games. Yeah, I'll just I'll just have a minor comment on my team. So the two highlighted numbers, the one and the twelve. One of those is right, and one of those is very very wrong, and it could be either of them. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that the correct statement. So I put myself at number one because i think i went into the draft thinking zamazenta's cracked and probably the second best pokemon in the format maybe even the best uh up there with normal melmetal and i think kiram is a really good partner for zamazenta and magmortar is the best redirector for that core uh for reasons that i will be showing later also rotom fan is incredibly slept on uh but yeah i think the way that I tackled this draft, I am very happy with, and I got basically the type of team I wanted to get out of here, which is a team that, you know, could just be the best team if I have any idea what I'm doing. But, you know, it could also just be really, really bad if I don't have any idea what I'm doing with Zamba and Kiro. So it's going to be a lot of fun this season. All right, moving on. Ryan, since you're the only person that understands what I'm doing, here you go. Yay! I'm only I, I'm I'm in an exclusive club of getting it, fellows. Um, all right, so this is Maxwell's team, uh, standing that Mel Metal there, uh, big boy. Um, the lowest rating is 15th, and the highest is first. Overall, aired pretty high. Most of the placements are kind of low end top five um which put him in third because this was a really weird pr list like for the record like this 5.88 in the past would have put maxwell at like sixth overall and like past prs uh it's something like that i was looking i was looking at the numbers um his team though is melmetal latios collapse pelipper mammoth swine electivire ribombi which we'll get to that's my favorite pick on the team uh salazzle serena pangoro and Amaldo. Um, so this is a team that is really focused on the Melmetal. Um, Melmetal Dus Dusclops for the first two picks, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Dusclops went down a tier um, for this draft, um, and I think it's a great partner to this Melmetal. Um, it offers a lot of good utility and support to it, and a nice weakness policy proc with either Bulldoze or uh, Brick Break, depending on your preferences. Um, Latios is really good here for special offense. I think he would have preferred Latios, which I think you said in your breakdown video, uh, for a bit more special offense. That's actually my big critique of the team, is I feel like the special offense is a little lacking here and there. Uh, but it's a really nice tier one dragon. Um, I've become very accustomed to running Latios and Latios in the GLDL. I think they're very good tier ones. Um, getting a nice Tailwind user out of it is really good. Um, Axel actually has three Tailwind users. Which is really nice. Uh, Pelipper for rain for Mel Metal. It's just to support it. Um, his rain sweeper is very untraditional. It's Armaldo, but I actually am pretty big on Armaldo. Um, it does have kind of a low base speed for a um, rain sweeper, but it actually still gets pretty quick if you like fully invest it. 
Um, and while not being a water type in of itself, it still does have water type moves to give itself that boost. And then it has stab bug and rock moves, which is really, really interesting and can work really, really well. Um, I actually think that that could be solid. And I think it's a nice one to pair with Pelipper too, because Pelipper then can click Tailwind for it to give it even more speed under that Swift Swim, which I think is really solid. Um, Electivire is the redirector, um, which um, makes sense. It's pretty good for um, just kind of taking away um, some of those hits from the Melmetal. Uh, it's got an, it's got motor drive, so it's good as well for that rain mode, taking hits away from the pellet burr, letting it do its thing safely. Uh, Rabombi is my favorite pick on the team. Um, so Rabombi cannot be um, is immune to flinching, so you can't actually fake it out. So it has speed swap for the Melmetal, um, which is amazing. Um, and then it also has Tailwind, which is amazing. Um, it also gets After You, I believe, as well, which is really good. And then it's got its standard bag of tricks. Uh, John actually had a pretty good amount of success with Rabombi when he was using it, and Transfer Moves only made it better. I think that thing's going to be a really big threat. Salazzle's a nice offensive support piece. Um, I, I don't love Salazzle. I never really have, but I'm excited to see it get some use. Serena's, I feel like, the most comfort pick on here. Uh, just a really solid bullshit denial on a team that I think wants it. Uh, Pangoro is a solid trick room sweeper and a nice support to that Dusclops Melmetal. Um, and then Mamoswine is an interesting pick. I actually really like it. Offensively, Mamoswine does really well into most of the teams. Um, ice and Ground hits a lot of things hard. I think the fact that it can run Thick Fat is really going to help. It's immune to Intimidate on a team that I think is a little weak to Intimidate, if you want it to be. With the, I think it's Oblivious is what does that. Um, and it, it actually, it pairs pretty nice with a lot of the Mons on this team individually. Um, and it does really well in Rain too with that Pelipper. So I think Mamoswine um, as sort of one of the other major max options is really good. I actually think I like it. I don't know if I like it better than a traditional Rain Sweeper, uh, but I think it's certainly more interesting. Um, and I think it hits a lot of things really hard. So uh, that is Maxwell's team. I think it is very solidly constructed. It's a lot like the Metagross team that Raz has, where it mostly filters into that Melmetal primarily. Um, and a similar way to how Raz's team mostly filters into his Metagross. I think Raz's team is overall a little better constructed. I actually rated it higher than Maxwell's team. But I do think this is a really good um, team overall with a lot of good with a lot of good modes and um, some really cool stuff going on. Uh, Dan. Yeah, it's really solid. I like the Rabombi pick. I think it's got good offensive and defensive cores. Uh, I did think Melmetal is up there with Zamazenta in my mind as two of the best options you could take in this draft. So getting it where you did, I think, is incredible value. Uh, I know I was trying to convince Noah to take it instead of Porygon 2 at one point in time, but that didn't work. Uh <laughs> Because I just think it is super, super solid. The Electivire, I think, and the Magmortar in Tier 3 are both really solid value. Uh, probably two of the better options uh, as redirectors in Tier 3. Uh, the Pelipper Armaldo I like, although I don't like that Armaldo stab. Uh, half of it you can't use to max as a Rain Sweeper. Uh, I think it's more going to be more of a Choice Band Sweeper as opposed to a Max Sweeper threat. And the team seems, as weird as it's going to say, it almost seems like it's soft to Trick Room if you aren't going Trick Room yourself. Because you've got a really good Trick Room mode, but it's not a Trick Room mode that you need to bring every game because you've got, the way, you've got really good ways around it. But because you have the really good ways around it, I think a clever builder might be able to find a way to out trick room your trick room mode expecting you to go for one of the ways around trick room and it's not very soft but i just think that that's one of the potential weaknesses and the other is the setter is uh obviously taunt bait if you if you can taunt the dusclops because you're running a violite dusclops 90 percent of the time i mean you can run mental herb on it but it just seems a little taunt baity but those are really really nitpicky in these parts uh for, for this part of the tier list. Rabombi's great, Electivire's great, Melmetal is awesome, Latios is a really good complement to Melmetal. Uh, that's all I really 
I mean, it's it's just a good team overall, and I think uh, I think it's a pretty solidly good team. But for people that don't think it's a good team, uh, what uh, what about you, Matt? What do you think? <laughs> well, that's that is certainly a segue. Um, Matt is the fifteen, by the way. No, no I no, you're, no, you're not. You're the thirteen. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know who did the fifteen, but it's not it's not fifteen bad. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm I, I I'm I'm just sort of in the camp of like. I don't really get it outside of your the more obvious combinations that you have with your tier ones. I mean, obviously, Mel Metal Dustclops, it's it's pretty clear what you want to do there. I think the uh, you're you're gonna have some pretty cool Latias Rabombi combinations, and Rabombi does uh, help tie the team together because it is um, uh, it is it functions a lot like Crobat, um, except I think it it may have even. Uh, may have even more tools and and some more versatility um because it, it can also run sweet veil if you need to stop sleep um it's uh it can actually be sort of offensive itself you can run like qui uh, quiver dance sets um i've i've used it in in draft with uh, with transfer moves as well and it's it's a fun mod I, I i like it it's high value in tier three it's um it is it is good uh i just feel like a lot of the middle picks um uh, Rabombi aside, um, if, if I, if I was just shown this draft, um, without knowing who made it, it, it I would, it, it sort of looks like a lot of stuff that, a lot of, a lot of mediocre mons smashed together just to make the, make your type chart look good. That's what it, that's what it feels like to me. Um, I I know enough to give Maxwell more credit than that, which is why I added that caveat of if I didn't know who drafted it, that's what it would look like. Um, I'm more than willing to accept that there's some stuff here that I'm not quite seeing, but um, I just uh, the Pelipper, I'm not I'm not convinced it's worth the tier two slot when your sweepers, uh, your rain sweepers are Maldo. Um, I, I'm with Dan and in, in that one of its stabs, overriding rain is. Uh, not great, so it's not as usable as a max option. I uh, definitely would have liked to see Pelipper, or not Pelipper, I would have liked to see Ludicolo or, or Kingdra in one of those other tier 2 slots. Um, Mamoswine, for anyone who's aware of my my season 3 run, uh, Mamoswine left a real bad taste in my mouth. I don't like it, and I, I feel like you may have the same problems with it that I did, because I also had uh, Rain with Pelipper, Plus Mamoswine, plus Salazzle, and those those two, those the latter two seem to be your best ways of, <clears throat> excuse me, of hitting uh, steel types. And uh, with Pelipper as the water type in your Fire Water Grass Core, that's a little bit rough for Salazzle. And Mamoswine versus steel types, holy shit, it's rough, man. Uh, I hated it. I I hope you have better uh, better luck and better matchups than I did. I hope you make Mamoswine work. I'm. I'm confident that there are team comps out there where it's actually good. Um, mine was just not one of them. Um, so, to me, that's that's kind of what sticks out. The the combinations with your tier ones and the the stuff in the middle, Rabombi aside, I, it seems fine. It's just I'm not I'm not really sold on that that big chunk of mons here. Yeah. So. I was going to take a conventional rain sweeper, um, but where it was in the draft, uh, I talked with Burst. Burst was going to take uh, Kingdra, which was going to be my pick, uh, and we came to a gentleman agreement that I wouldn't take it, and we'll just kind of wait on our rain modes. Um, and at that time, I already had Serena, because uh, I really wasn't looking at Ludicolo. But overall, uh, I think there are some things that uh, you are missing. Uh, one thing I will reveal because I think it's hilarious. Don't be surprised when you see a weakness policy Mamoswine, uh, because I can proc it, which is awesome. Um, I can proc it at a priority. Um, other than that, my main thing was I've never drafted a, a high tier steel type ever in the history of MDL. Uh, I've had Mawile, Kling Kling, Berserker, and, Lud and uh, Lucario. Um, so everything I drafted is definitely not in my play style. Uh, Ryan can attest I hate rain, uh, and I hate hard trick. Yeah, he does. So, I've tried to get Maxwell to draft rain before, and he won't do it. So I kind of did it, question mark. Um, but I'm, I'm super satisfied. I've already been building 
uh, for my week one match and everything just feels so good. Everything's versatile um, and everything just honestly kind of complements uh, things in ways that you wouldn't expect. Um, but our next one is going to be Matt with Dina. All right. So uh, Dina's team, I, I think it's pretty apparent what, uh, what all it wants to do. Um, I, it doesn't need a whole lot of explanation, but uh, I'll, I'll just touch on uh, all the uh, all the good shit that, that's that's here. Um, she's got modes on modes on modes, and it looks really cool. There's a lot of a lot of cool combinations here. Um, to, to start off with, she uh, she picked the uh, the G Max Mel Metal um, uh, because uh, she is in the the other division was able to pick up the G Max form. Um, <coughs> Uh, she's the the whole uh, the whole trick room mode that she has going on is is a real uh, it's it's a real S plus tier trick room mode. It's it's I think it's fantastic and it, the the synergy is is out of control. Uh, the G Max Hatterene is is uh, another one of those mods that we moved down from tier one into tier two. She picked it up pretty early because it's a good value pick. It's a powerful mod and, and it's uh, something that she is very familiar with. So it's a comfort pick for her. Uh, if anybody here knows how to use uh, a Hatterene, it's it's going to be Tina. Um, and the, uh, the 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 whole Trick Room core that she drafted with the Mel Metal, the Hatterene, and the Guzzlord um, is is just fantastic. It's got great synergy. Uh, this is the kind of type core that I really like to see, where um, they they're all around kind of the same speed stats. They kind of want to do the same thing. They kind of all three of them want to be in the same mode and they're going to work really well together i think um it's an obvious fairy dragon steel core here uh but you also have some additional synergy between the dark typing on guzzlord and the psychic typing on uh on hatterene um which <coughs> um is uh not um usually you want uh you want a fighting type uh to go with the the psychic and dark mainly to to hit opposing uh dark types uh, and kind of steel as well but um, since you also have that fairy typing on Hatterene, that kind of that covers part of that uh, for, for hitting dark types. Um, and then if you want to hit steel types with this Trick Room core, uh, Melmetal, Hatterene, and Guzzlord all get uh, coverage moves to hit steel types super effectively. You got uh, fighting and ground on Melmetal. You got mystical fire from Hatterene, and then you got fighting and ground coverage, or sorry, fire and ground coverage from Guzzlord. I think it also gets fighting as well. It might get hammer arm. Um, so super good trick room mode uh really great synergy good mons i know some people uh, in, in this league are not super high on guzzlord but i think it's absolutely worth a tier three slot just in general and it works really really well here um outside of the trick room modes uh mode um she was looking for for some some fast modes and wasn't really uh sure what to go with but with the uh with the terrain and weather that she ended up with um she was really hitting those floors and ceilings. Uh, she's got a, a lot of slow stuff for the trick room mode. Hatterene being below base 30 is super nice. Um, Melmetal still has a good uh, speed stat. Guzzlord is up at, at 43, I think, which is uh, not that bad when you consider uh, the, the speeds on the uh, on the other two trick room mons. Um, and then as for the ceilings part of that, I mean, holy shit, what's faster than a lowland Raichu in electric terrain? Nothing, pretty much. Um, and then you've also got plenty of other fast stuff, like Tapu Koko is one of the fastest things on the board. Um, Thievul with uh, a, a proc on the Psychic Seed or the Electric Seed, she's got access to both, and Thievul works really well with both terrains, uh, as does Raichu for obvious reasons. Um, stuff like Ndidi and Vanillux um, are going to be uh, really use useful with a Scarf, so there's, there's plenty of opportunity for speed there. Um, there's just gonna, you know, they can just very easily just blizzard spam or expanding force spam. Um, Scarf's gonna go really well with that. And then even even something like Bear Tick, which um, is is in tier four for a reason. I think it can actually be uh, pretty good here. And the uh, um, the the hail mode combined with the terrain stuff, especially with the the electric spam, um, is is really where her offensive synergy is coming into. Uh, 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 delete those ground types that that are really going to threaten the uh, the the Coco Raichu. Um, so she's she's relying a lot on uh, on the offensive synergy there. And I think in a lot of cases, 
she's not even necessarily going to need the bear tick. It's more there as an option um, because the vanillix can actually function very well uh, as a, a deterrent to uh, to ground types uh, just on its own. <clears throat> um, the the only real problems here are uh, they're, they're uh, she doesn't have any ground resists or immunities, which um, could sometimes be a problem, but I think with that offensive synergy uh, that, that I was talking about, it's uh, not uh, it's not always going to be a problem if she if she just plays well. Um, and then I think I, I think maybe the uh, the Kingler pick I think is a cool one. Um, it's uh, she's doubling up on the water typing, but um, I, I think maybe that slot in, in a in a uh, future week as a transaction could potentially be a, a an opportunity to patch up that. Uh, uh, defensive ground weakness, um, but you know it's a tier four slot. It's it's uh, w when you start getting nitpicky about what what the tier four uh, mons are. I think that's a sign that the overall team is is pretty goddamn good. I think she's got um, just crazy offense and a lot of great synergy. Uh, this is clearly one of the best teams we have. So I am not as high on this team. I do believe it is good. I give it a four. Um, but when, when you just kind of fold to ground and fighting moves and your steel type can't boost your defenses, I just have an issue rating it, uh, at one or two. I mean, four is still extremely high. Um, that is my, that is really my issue. Um, I get it. You have ways to deal with it, but a tech fire move that is, it's just mystical fire you're not really checking those steel types. Uh, and if that steel type does get ground coverage, a lot of your offense is special. Uh, I know some of your mods can be uh, mixed, like the Guzzlord. Um, Coco, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I do think you are going to struggle with those uh, ground fighting um, and just not having a resistance or an immunity just really turned me off from this team. Um, like I said, again, four is incredibly high, but that's as high as I would go with it mainly for that. And also, yeah, you have had Arini at base 29, but I'm not afraid to set trick room up against you. Um, if you have a good trick room mode, if you don't have a good trick room mode, go fuck yourself. You're not setting trick room up against a uh, Hatterene. Um, but where I think Hatterene is going to kind of fall short is that your redirection doesn't come in the form of a terrain as well. Um, which I know is one reason why Hatterini in DD female was so good. Um, now your redirection and your terrain are in two separate slots. Um, which I'm not saying it's not going to work. I'm just, uh, kind of questionable about it. Um, but other than that solid team, just, if you had at least a resistance, uh, I'd feel more confident. But, uh, with that being said, that that's kind of where I'm at with this. So, uh, Ryan or Dan, one of you two. Um, I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah, I'm so worried about ground types. I, I know, Matt. I, the thing is, is that I do think that this team can blitz a lot of potential ground coverage, but teams are also very bulky, and there are ways to mitigate damage from this team. Um, and I do, I worry less about, you know, I'm less worried about Mammoth Swine, and I'm more worried about, like, the other Mel Metal with Max Quake. Like, that's that's the concern for me, is I'm more worried about the fact that it feels like if, it feels like it's a little too free, because, yeah, even if I hit... Because the physical threats, like the Mel Metal and the Coco, are, in my opinion, two of the bigger physical threats on the team. I still don't mind clicking Quake into those, and I'm still getting a Spadef boost, so that is not maxed. I'm taking hits from better. And then if Coco is special, or if whatever else is this... I'm still boosting myself. So it's, I feel like it is potentially a big issue on that defensive side of things. However, this team is just absolutely insane with its modes and speed tiers. Um, it will take a lot of souls. It's a really, really scary team. I'm excited to see it be played. Dual terrain is really cool and hasn't been used a lot in MDL history. So I'm very excited for that. Um, but yeah, I agree. I, for me, it was really hard to get over that hurdle of there's no resist. Because to me, like, your counterplay is getting hit with it. <laughs> like, um, so. <Yeah. laughs> 
Like uh, Matt was I, like, oh, you have this great counterplay. And I'm like, you really don't. You have blitz the ground type attacker or lose, like, or just get hit with a max quake and eat it. You know, like there's not, that's not really counter in my mind. Yeah, I I actually really like the Tapu Koko pick on this team. Um, Shocker, I think Tapu Koko is good, uh, which I know is the upset of the century. But I I think the physical Coco sets are really going to balance out the lack of traditional speed control on this team because then you're not just going to have the Raichu Thievul fast, but the Coco can make anything on your team fast that needs to be. Uh and I do really like this team, but I just think it's tough to not have even a single resist to a Max Quake because Melmetal doesn't want it, Coco doesn't want it, Raichu doesn't want it, uh, just as like Baseline doesn't want it, and then Hatterene doesn't want to hit into it afterwards. I I think the team's really good. Uh, I think it's also in a really competitive division, and. It's going to be a lot of fun seeing a lot of these teams going head to head with one another. Uh, speaking of teams in that division, though, uh, anyone else want to talk about Dinos before we move on to that last slide? Uh, no, real quick. Look, sh- her overall ranking was a five. This overall ranking is a 2.58. Uh, this is mine. Uh, I'll take Ryan. Consensus number one. Uh, it's not even close. Uh, high at a one, of course, and then a low at seven. I think this was the only coach without a, a rating in the teens, which is hilarious. Um, but Celesteela, Latios, Raichu, Arcanine, Azumarill, Nidoking, Persian, Kofregurgus, Passimian, uh, Mr. Mime, Galar, and Lorantis. Uh, if you do look, Passimian is actually uh, his mon of choice for the premiere, and for good reason. I'm not going to spoil a lot of it because I have talked to him personally, but Passimian is absolutely cracked on this squad. And it's kind of funny. Um, but if you just look, we've already seen Celesteela Raichu just go in. Uh, it does cause a lot of issues. And now with it having Follow Me, it is also now support for other uh, other Mons. And it this, this team is insane. The one gripe I do have is you, you are going to have to balance that fire uh, weakness from the Celesteela. Because this, this team, not as prevalent as the other two Steel teams uh in me and raz a lot of it does get funneled into celesteela but not as much um but you do have immunities and resistances of course to fire in that arcanine with flash fire uh and the azumarill but latios is resist uh, and, and latios yes but uh other than that there's not a real oh my god this is a weakness you have to hurdle you know we've seen dina oh my god you have to hurdle this ground weakness all season long if you don't make changes uh, this, this this team's pretty tightly knit um, to where, as it stands now, 1 through 11 is doing work. Um, where this becomes an issue is if somewhere down the line we actually see an issue, find an issue, someone exploits something, uh, and this team really doesn't have room to change much. Um, but other than that, th- this team is phenomenal. This is one of the best teams Ryan's ever drafted. Um, and... There's not really anything bad to say about it. I can't really nitpick anything. Um, Other than your speed tiers, your speed tiers are a little wonky. Um, Other than like Kofagrigus and Lorantis, I don't mind really setting Trick Room on you. uh, Because your Trick Room mode is on the faster end. But other than that, just good luck even nailing down what six are coming. Um, So yeah, that's, that's my take. Solid team. Next. Yeah, basically the same thing. Uh, the Lurantis is going to be running Iron Ball about 85% of the time based on the history of Lurantises I've seen run in Trick Room before. Uh, the Persian is going to be... I think the Persian's a really solid support option for this team. I like a lot of what it can do. I love Azumarill and Arcanine on the same team. The flexibility there. And I think Raichu, Latio, Celesteel is a really solid core. Uh, no major complaints. I mean, this team only loses to my team because Zamazenta is cracked. But uh, but on a serious note, like this is obviously just a really, really solid team. And uh, it's going to be tough to play around throughout the season for everyone who goes up against it. 
yeah, it's it's uh, it's gonna be really tough to know exactly what what he's bringing against you. Not only like Mon choice, but there's uh, there's a few things here that can switch modes pretty effectively. Um, at first glance, this team to me is is just like uh, it, it just it just felt like straight up good stuffs and synergy. Um, but at, upon further examination, there's there's actually some uh, some interesting uh, super sweepy potential kind of combinations uh, lurking here. Um, a lot of them have to do, I think, with that Persian. Um, the Persian is is going to be a really nice and annoying glue piece for this uh, this team, um, and uh, I I think probably. Maybe, probably more than anyone else, Ryan is is getting really good uh, value and use out of his tier four picks. It's hard to it's hard to do that um, given how much garbage you have to sift through in that tier. But um, I, I think he's getting more use out of those slots than than maybe anybody else. Um, other than that, I think uh, I think you guys covered uh, pretty much everything else. Oot! I actually got first this time fucking crazy we just got to kick matt out of the league more and i can get first overall fucking matt, has, crazy, matt right? has never been first overall in prs i know it's fucking <laughs> hilarious uh no i'm really happy with this team i think it's gonna be really good i have a lot a lot a lot of stuff planned um this team was really um i mostly drafted a lot of stuff that i've wanted to just run in mdl i know it's not like as exciting as a lot of the mythical teams but i've been wondering on sell steela for like two seasons straight um, I've been wanting to run Arcanine for a whole since my first season here. Um, I want a whole season with a Zamoral because after using it in playoffs, I fell in love with it. Um, I've been wanting to go back to Persian. That's when I used that in Shadow League that he did, and I loved it. And it has really been underutilized in uh, MDL overall. I feel um, Hector had some good stuff with it though. Uh, Mr. MG is one of my favorites. Uh, I basically just drafted a team of a lot of Pokemon that I have been wanting to use, um, and then a bunch of favorite picks and things that I think are underrated. Um, I finally didn't get sniped on Raichu. I'm very excited about that. I thought for sure I would be. Um, and I'm just very excited. I think this is going to be a fun team, fun season. Uh, thank you all for uh, the picks. Clearly there's some confidence in the team being good. I'm not sure how good it is, but I'm feeling pretty confident um i've already started some early phases of building with it and it feels pretty pretty freaking strong so yeah the question mark now is on the coach so like if he, <laughs> uh -huh. if he does, it's he on does, me and i'm an idiot he poorly, so he does poorly it's all him and not the team's fault <laughs> yeah no yeah, pressure that's true. all right that's true so we will round this two and a half hour video out with just your standard this is what it looks like uh, on How the you never got fixed. God damn it, Ma Ma Maxwell. No, I didn't do this. I just copy and pasted it. This was not my. Oh, part. I fucking got it's not fixed. Anyway. All right. Anyway, from top to bottom, we got Ryan, Dina, me, Dan, Anthony, Raz, Charles, Jess, Gumi, Toxic, John, Dark, Noah, Tay, Hector, and Burst. Uh, and then on the right, those are just where they line up in their given divisions. Um, Red it... division, best division. No. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, Matt drafted. That's what it looks like to me. Matt, when you drafted our division, you were an idiot. <laughs> hey, I told you, I told you my thought process, and I, I stand by it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, uh, no, I think it's going to be a good season. I think both divisions are going to be very competitive. Um, even if you look at it, you know, you got a big uh, concentration of red at the top, but. I don't really think that's how things are going to end. Um, you got really, really good coaches on both sides. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to wrap it up with, I'm just excited for this season. Um, this is a lot of things that nobody's really used to, uh, especially in a VGC style. Um, so there's going to be a lot of new and uh, interesting things to look out for. And I'm just super excited. So uh, that's yeah. me wrapping it up. Uh, what do you, what do you guys got? Uh, these are the weirdest fucking PRs we've ever done the numbers on. Oh my on. fuck. Um, do, do, have some fun. Uh, compare like the averages on this season to even only just the last season PR video, and you're gonna be fucking shocked. Um, right, right. Your, your average drastic. would put you third last season. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, Dina's would have put her like fifth or sixth or something ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's really, really fucking stupid. Um, I think like six or seven coaches had like one and 15. 
Yeah. Uh, well, and one of the things is, is that, like, I think part of it is just that we're playing in such a new format with so much experimental stuff that we had a lot of different diverse opinions. Uh, this video was more so us attempting to understand uh, everyone's PRs more so than us giving, like, full breakdowns, really. Um, like, for example, we all clearly liked Raz's team, and it did not rate as highly as I think any of us put it, but we're all sitting here like, well, clearly half the league thinks that there's something going on here. So part of it is, is that, like, in our analysis, too, we're trying to, like, make sure we cover our bases for both the high and the low placements, and it, it was it was pretty challenging uh, for this go-around, uh, just because there's a lot to consider. Matt and Dan? Um, uh yeah looking looking forward to the season i think it's going to be a lot of fun i don't think there will be a division that goes 13 and 1 in the uh interdivision play in the first and last week of the season but i i do think that uh especially being in the red division it's going to be a dogfight to get those playoff and wild card berths and i think the blue division has the potential for that as well uh, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to uh, to see how this season plays out. I'm I'm really excited to see how a lot of these teams function, um, especially given uh, all these uh, all these new toys that that we get to mess around with. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm also I'm also kind of uh, looking forward to sort of judging things from the sidelines, at least in the uh, in the early part of the season. Um, we'll see what happens later, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to being a spectator with uh, with so much interesting stuff uh, out out on the board, um, so <clears throat> uh, I, I hope you guys don't disappoint with uh, with some of the games that I get to watch. Yeah, so this is gonna wrap it up. Last thing, we will still have our regularly regularly scheduled um, segments. Uh, me and Dan will still be doing the uh, pre pre game breakdown. And then uh, me and Matt will be jumping to the blue side each week. And Ryan and Dan will be jumping to the red side. Of course, we can get other coaches to help out if we choose. But uh, those things will still happen. Uh, you'll still get two weekly breakdowns and then one uh, pregame breakdown. And then whatever anybody else wants to post, send it to me and we'll post it. Um, but yeah, so good luck to all the coaches. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.